midnight, Jan uh, uh, January the 1st, 2020. Oh. I then find out later that he had COVID. And oh. so, so starts the year. My oh. wife, father gets it, mother gets it. <laughs> And 2020 begins. So this is my COVID jacket. And will always be remembered as that's how we started the year. Oh, my God. I mean, what a year. Jesus. I mean, what a hell of a year. I, I can't believe how, well, A, how much has changed over the last year. And I know this is a celebration of the, the launch of the tears, which is, I mean, I, I can't believe it's a year ago that we did that. No. And I never thought we'd get it off the ground because it was so complicated to sort this whole thing out like yeah. 800 whiteboards trying to figure yeah. out how do we work out this membership tiers and we launched it just as covid hit almost yeah as it started to hit mainstream consciousness we launched it yeah and i mean clearly about 10,000 people or more joined real vision over that following 3 months and we yeah. had this beautifully laid out journey for them to get what they needed out of real vision and it was just like perfect timing for everybody it's like we, we got our shit together just at the right moment. It's a, it's a beautiful moment of serendipity. Amazing, I know. really. I know. Amazing. And who'd have thought that, you know, when we first cut, just over a year ago, we were still film, filming in studios. We had all these expensive three camera shoots with gappers and T-boys and all of this. Cut to this world and it's so yeah. flexible. We can book guests in seconds. Yeah. Stuff like that. It's yes. like game changing. No, it's, it's, I look back at, I look, so, you know, a lot of people who, who, who have been joining us have been with us over the last year. They've been with us with the tears. But do you remember when we first launched? So when we first set up our website, do you remember our website basically said, we're not going to show you anything or tell you anything about Real Vision. Pay a subscription and see what's behind the wall. But one and a half thousand people paid without us having ever made a video. This is all we've done. Remy, cobbled this together with you, trying to design it. None of us yeah. have ever done anything like this. No, it, it was extraordinary. In fact, have we, is there a way of playing that video? Just so we can yeah. have a look at that. I think we have. Let's so this is the very play. first thing that Real Vision ever did. This, is, and I think we've stayed true to the intent as well. I'll say. See, this is still true. And still true. <laughs> and she leads the largest women-owned business in the U.S. Lynn, if you're watching a Derek Bryan, that is uh, unbelievable. The truth hurts. That. Me too. I think we nailed it. What <laughs> <thing> <laughs> Honestly, I'm that. I've not, I've not seen it for a few years. No. One thing is that was 2014. Yeah. And Bitcoin's in it. I was just going to say the first thing we ever did had Bitcoin in it. Also, it was just off the back of Europe almost collapsing in 2012 when you and yeah. I were in Spain. Yeah. And the Arab Spring. And there was this feeling that the world was changing. And part of what we said is people need to get up to speed because the next recession is going to be terrifying. Yeah. And yeah. it was kind of this whole journey. And then it all hit last year. 
Yeah, exactly. I think that's one of the things, I feel like we're in a very similar time now. It feels like we're in that same moment of change is upon us, a different kind of change, but there's still that same thing in the zeitgeist that people want change and they're pushing for change. Yeah, and this whole kind of GameStop thing, stuff what's yeah. going on in crypto. Crypto, DeFi. The populism, it's all part of this big meta narrative, yeah. which is yeah. people want change and they're going to yeah. fight for it. And it's fascinating. And Real Vision was really set up for all of this. It's been really amazing. It is. I mean, to be fair, we've, we've, and we found ourselves along the way. Like I remember when we first, that you mentioned about the Bitcoin thing in there. And we did, a, we talked about Bitcoin in one of the first pieces of filming we ever did. And we got a kicking in the comments section, people saying, what is that? That's not real money. This is ridiculous. Why are you wasting our time? And I remember thinking, oh God, maybe we've misread this completely. The <laughs> other thing that was interesting was how much fatter I was. Yes. I like a hamster. Jesus, what I happened? thought I was roguishly handsome and slim. <laughs> I was like a melon head. <laughs> is that just stress? Is that the stress of the whole thing? <laughs> everybody who's watched that, everybody who watched it was thinking the same thing, but you had to say it before we could all laugh about it. Gentlemen, I, I'm, I'm just- uh, George, I'm so glad, Raul, I'm so glad you brought that up because I've watched videos of you from the past and I've had that thought of like, boy, Raul, you got in great shape. It's got in great shape. <laughs> It's nothing like a year of lockdown, is it? I mean, of course. Of course. But I think that's pretty good because I feel like a lot of people probably did the reverse. You know what I mean? A lot of yeah. people put on that, that COVID-10, that COVID-15. Exactly. Yeah, just the, yeah, the COVID-15. How is Benjamin Button? He's just slowly getting younger as we go through. You wait till you see him in five years' time. That's because oh, I yeah. married a 30-year-old or 32 year old. Yeah, exactly. That helps. Can I just say <laughs> that video, by the way, because I was watching... Uh, is the most real vision thing I've ever seen. You've got dubstep underneath like killer clowns, shots of Bitcoin. And I'm like, this is about, this is coming from a finance like channel. This is awesome. This is insane. Exactly. Uh, it's, not quite quite the message. Message. it's not quite yeah. the Goldman Sachs message, is it? Right. Which, which I think is cool though. I think like as some, I mean, for me, and for those of you who don't know me, I'm, my name is George Cameron. I'm just, I'm an actor and comedian. I'm not a, not a uh, financial advisor. Don't worry, I'm not going to tell you when to sell your Bitcoin. And if I did, don't listen to me. But um, I found you guys, you know, I had never seen that specific video, but that's what I liked about Real Vision when I started kind of going down my own rabbit hole of like during the pandemic, which I'm sure you got a lot of viewership because of yeah. that. Yeah. I was yeah. probably someone who a lot of viewers can relate to because I was like, oh yeah, you know, money's crazy. What am I going to do? Podcast YouTube, like any good millennial, right? That's where I'm going to get my info. You got to <laughs> siphon through all the BS, like the crypto bad boy investor man's like, no, not that guy. And you come across <laughs> Ralph Powell and you're like, okay, this guy's clearly got like integrity. He's smart. He's got a background and he's wearing this. Cool hang on, hang on, hang on, hang on. Don't go too far. And he's got a pool table in the back, a bar in the background. That's all anybody cares about. The guy with bar. <laughs> exactly. I could say anything here. Everyone goes, oh, he knows exactly what he's talking about. He's got a bar. Exactly. Rather and the other thing I notice is you're, you seem to have a cleaner who is always, always cleaning your house. It's, look at those floors, they're shining. There's like 15 flunkies who work here all day. <laughs> exactly. And stuff you know, like he's that. on a loop going round in circles. I can't believe I haven't put this together before, but with that jacket on, Raoul, and that background, you look like a James Bond villain. I'm drinking yes. Bollinger as well, so there I'm you go. drinking James Bond champagne, but like a so Bond villain. In the Caribbean, in the Caribbean. I mean, it all adds up. Wow. You, can, you, you can see that Ralph's got a very simplistic kind of vision of how to live life. It's based on books he read when he was like but 12. <laughs> when I said, Damien, yeah, I want to have a house on the water, you took it literally. Yes. Up in a houseboat. Yes. Uh, yeah. I, I live on a Dutch barge, a 1927 Dutch barge. On the So when we left Spain, Raul and I lived in Spain together for about 10 years. And that's where we first met and all the ideas for Real Vision came together. And Raoul went um, scuba diving, I think, in uh, the Galapagos Islands. And you said, somebody on, that, on the boat had said to you, if you really want amazing scuba diving, go to the Cayman Islands. And I remember you went and you came back and you said, I bought a beach. I was like, what, what the fuck you mean you bought a beach? No one buys a beach. As you, as you do, as you do. Exactly. And Raoul had bought this beach and you built the house and we left Spain around the same time. And I, I love boats and surfing and sailing. 
Uh, so we came to the UK and we're on the East Coast with amazing sailing. And you went to Cayman for your scuba diving and your beach. And because you'd always, I think ultimately you'd always wanted your own island, but that wasn't quite achievable just yet, was it? So I, I'm, sharing I'm, with a hundred people. I'm slowly trying to become the Sultan of Little Cayman, <laughs> get them all under my subjugation, and then exactly. I can rule the place. So I'm working Look, on it. I've got the kind of king's jacket, the Sultan's you've jacket. You've got it. Working, if you right? guys, if, if we can get enough blacklist subscribers to Real Vision, maybe Raul could one day own his own island. That's that's the that's, that's the end big, goal here. Yeah. That's really what the blacklist is all about. That's, all, that's all it's about. That's because all actually, it's I get 99% of the economics for my island fund. <laughs> And what exactly. I'm doing is paying people to leave the island. It's <laughs> exactly. kind of like universal basic income, but I throw them off the island with some money so I can take the whole place over. Beautiful. And you think he's joking. That is actually in transit now, as we speak. But all of Real Vision is about that, actually. That's the ultimate That's mission. the grand plan from the beginning. Exactly uh, right. Exactly. Well, speaking of which, guys, we... Uh, we're gonna have a lot of fun today. We already are. There's gonna be some awesome guests joining us. Um, and, you know, my role here today, I'm, we're going to be doing some fun giveaways, Real Vision giveaways. Some of these prizes okay. are really, really cool, uh, and they only get better as, as the hour is going to go on. But let's just jump into our first one, just so the audience kind of knows, like, what to do and what we're doing. Okay. Um, this first one's for some RV merch. We're talking T-shirts. We're talking sweatshirts. Just all the best RV merch you can get. And so basically, here's how it's going to work, guys. I'm going to ask a question. might be trivia. It might be a prompt. And for people who want to respond, all you got to do is respond in the chat, which is at the bottom of your Zoom screen, but make sure your answer is addressed to all panelists, okay? That's the key. Don't address it to Raul or myself or Damien. Address it to all panelists, okay? Um, so for this first one, real simple, all it's going to be is we want you to use one word to describe real vision, okay? In, in, in your opinion, one word to describe real vision, no hyphenates, no two words, just one word, and we're going to randomly select uh our five favorite ones and you're gonna get some sweet sweet merch and also guys the winners we're gonna contact you after the hour's over okay so i'm, okay, I'm watching okay. this the, the i can't even my eyes can't keep coming. up with the it's chat like going so fast there's one and a half thousand people are typing in words it's unbelievable oh my i'm so glad callie's on that because like if i had to sift through all this right now i would be I'm getting a migraine watching that insane hey dame talk you were up to some exciting stuff with Creative Studios that you you were up all night over. Oh, uh, yes. So, to, actually, this education you, stuff, you've been doing, you, working hard. Honestly, on Raul, that's very good. You're actually quite good at this, aren't you? Yes. So. I stopped the, you going astray. because Exactly. It's my I was just enjoying my little talisker here, thinking <laughs> what a lovely night it was. So, yes, I spent all of last night uh, with, with, with the team... You know, the, the, we were working on an edit for a new show that has launched. For a moment there, I thought Raoul wasn't wearing any trousers, which just stopped me in my tracks in, in fear for a moment. No, we're working on a new show called The Masterclass, Investor Masterclass. Uh, it's really, really good. I have to say, I am super proud of it. Uh, it launches on the channel uh, this afternoon. And it's basically an interview between Jason Buck and uh, Brent Johnson but it's broken down. It looks cool as hell. We've got a really nice device we built around it. So I urge anybody to tune into that. That's gonna be the beginning of a whole series of masterclass videos that go out once a month. Yeah, but you've also done, you know, from Creative Studios, which is our in-house production yeah. where we work for third parties, you've also created Roger Hurst Insider Talks that breaks yeah. down the real vision. Yeah, do you know what Roger does? So Roger watches you, uh, you, you do your thing with, uh, with Justin. He goes through it, he watches it all, and then we film the insider talks in one take. He sits yeah. down and he just goes and just delivers the whole thing. And then afterwards we drop in all the charts and stuff. I mean, the guy has got, he's on the some kind of ex extreme MI uh, spectrum. Unlike me, he went to a decent university. He was he actually quite a decent smart. university. Yeah, he went to a posh school, posh university. But what Roger most loves is he wears 1970s tracksuit tops. And actually he has a budget to go to vintagesports.com and buy Sergio Tacchini, Fila, Puma <laughs> sports tops. It's the only way we can get him to do it. So that's his little fetish. But I think you should also mention, because nobody here knows about what we've just done, because it's not been announced publicly, but we have just bought the Lex Van Dam Trading Academy. 
Yes. Lex is an ex-colleague of mine at Goldman. He ran prop trading in equities, sat opposite me. Then we both went to GLG Partners, where he ran the European Hedge Fund and I ran the Macro Fund. Then we made a show for the BBC called Million Dollar Traders, where we trained a bunch of ordinary people to become hedge funders. That was a great managers. show. That was a great show. And then, yeah, because we were in Spain at the time. We were talking about it around the barbecue in Spain. And about Tom Creel, exactly. Whoever said that? Somebody on the, on the chat. Jason, somebody. Yes. And then, um, and then Lex made a course of it. But being a tri typical trader, he was terrible at selling it. And yes. so it's a brilliant course because you never get taught by somebody who's act Most people are charlatans, but Lex is the real deal. He still runs a huge family office. So you're now refilming all of that to kind of get it exactly. up to real vision. I mean, I remember how much work you did on Billion Dollar Trading behind the scenes. You wrote stuff, you developed the training, you did all of it, and then in the final letter, the BBC gave you about 10 seconds. You did so much work on it. It's ridiculous. But yeah, but, we're, taking, we're taking that course and we are re... We're basically giving it the real vision treatment. And uh, what we're doing is we're integrating the learning from the course with you know, beautiful uh, clips uh, uh, and pearls of wisdom from Carl Bass, Stanley Druckenmiller, Mike Green, you know, big names adding into it. It's a really great piece of, piece of work. And the actually. most amazing thing, when this eventually comes out, it's going to take a few months to reshoot, yeah. but it's going to be, it's a $4,000 product and it's going to be free as part of Real Vision Pro. It's ludicrous. Oh, well, so I remember we, when we bought, we bought the company and then announced that these, you know, and everyone thought, oh, wow, that's interesting. You know, $4,000 courses, that's an interesting add-on. And we said, no, no, it's free. It's added value. And you then know? all of this masterclass stuff is all free stuff for plus. And then all of the investor tutorials are all free in Real Vision Essential. So it's, everything is free of this education. I agree. Because it's, we've always said education is so crucial to, what, what we've found is, People are really good at because what they all do. Because all of us know pretty much fuck all. That's the Exactly. Problem. Everybody Even knows George their little knows thing. Everybody knows their little area, F4, foreign, Forex, or whatever it might, bonds, or, but it's, most people don't get out of their little silo. And that's what the education is all about. So well, George, also, I think the fact that you guys make things like that free, or at least free to, you know, one of the tiered memberships, like, again, someone from my perspective, if I see like, hey, you know, you guys can take this course, blah, blah, it's $4,000 or it's a thousand. And I'm immediately like, these guys are swindlers, right? But that's yeah. what I think people like about Real Vision is it feels very authentic. And it feels like oh. you guys, the, the primary goal isn't we're trying to make as much money as possible. The primary goal is we want as many people as possible to have the best information and data they can have. I agree. Right? Exactly. Yeah. I mean, we started this whole thing, George, with the idea that we could democratize this, the very best financial intelligence. It shouldn't be for the few, it should be for everybody. Right. And so if we believe in that, we've got to do stuff like this. Nobody else dares do stuff like this because it sounds crazy. Right. What, it, buy a business and then give that service away for free. Right. When, when, Raul got, when Raul got married last year, was it last year or the year before? I can't even remember now. It must have been the year October before. October 2019, yeah. Yeah. What was really interesting at the wedding, it was an amazing wedding in Morocco. What was really interesting is, George, you were there. Hello, George. You were at the wedding. What was I really was like... Shouting with really Shannon. These guys, no, 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 stop, stop. So I was shouting at Shannon. These guys were talking about education, getting all my credit, and just talking to everyone. Just Sorry, who are you? Sorry, who are you? <laughs> <laughs> Careful. No, at your wedding, you had people from when you went to school, when you were at university, when you in your first job. And it was a really important statement of loyalty. And I think for me, loyalty is a really important thing of Real Vision where you know, some of our members are, are, we call them the founder members who were there on day one and shout out to all the founder members. And being loyal to your audience is really important to, uh, to Raul and I particularly, but I think to everyone at Real Vision. And, and we want, or we would love loyalty back because it's a relationship, you know, we want to help people. We want to We've build that. Said we're all on this journey together. Exactly. So George, tell us a bit more about what you're up to with this education stuff, because you're the mastermind behind it. We're, we're just the puppets. Exactly. <laughs> well, yeah, you kind of mentioned it all. So just cheers and we can just drink and fuck around. No. Uh, so what we try to do basically is, you know, we've always been saying, you know, democratize, democratize, democratize. But what financial media typically does is you have anchors just telling, just talking at you and typically progressively they get fatter and fatter. In our case, we 
tried to get our anchors getting skinnier and skinnier, like Rahal. And then <laughs> also we want to bring the entire community together and we want to tease out all of the learnings from those videos and take you on, a, on, a, on, on, that, on that journey basically from somebody who, does, who doesn't understand what a, what a bond is, where I was like four or five years ago, to being able to understand some of the more complicated investment themes, to then being able to understand and start thinking about, okay, how do I treat my finances? How do I start sizing my positions? To then actually, you know, building out an investment portfolio for yourself. So just taking you on that journey is really, really important to us. And also involving building a community around it, right? Until like one year ago, we were just, you know, video on demand channel. Right now, we are involving our members. You know, we had... Moritz, one of the more kind of famous members, she did a phenomenal interview the other day with one of the unknown market wizards from, uh, I forgot the, the, the author, but the, the famous- Jack Swager's book. Correct, correct. Jack I mean, Swager, I sent that right? to you and said, watch this. I mean, it's ridiculous. Correct. It was phenomenal, phenomenal. And that's a member bringing a guest and interviewing him, right? So that doesn't happen anywhere else where- Nobody else has it. peer to peer, right? Because everyone's scared because they want to be the big personality. And we're yeah. like, no, no, the learning is the personality. Correct. And we need the best people to do it. Nobody else dares do it. I mean, can you imagine another big podcast saying, oh, we're not going to appear in the podcast this week. We're going to have somebody else do it. No. So we are decentralizing more and more of the kind of the market analysis while building layers on top of teasing out education, you know, launching crypto events. Uh, affiliate partnerships and other uh, double downing and triple downing on technology and things like that. So, uh, yeah, that's basically kind of what's happening. As for the actual formats, I mean, we, yeah, this is happening live, announcing we're dropping the first episode of Investor Masterclass, something we've worked on for three months, probably. Right after this, Shannon that's, is going to kill me if we drop good, it. Better be good, Damien. Damien, it better be good because you were like, you were boasting this morning about how good it was. And you stayed up all night and it's going to be it's incredible. Good. It's good. It's going to be fucking good. That's it's, all I can it say. Is, if, it, if is there are any, it is phenomenal. Do you know what? If there are any thumbs down or negative comments, I'm, I'm going to put the thumbs down. down and visit I, them. I will do it. <laughs> yeah. Because our borders are closed and you can't come here. <laughs> Yeah, we launched before that, you know, the tutorials, some of the explainers, both of them are on Essential. Then on Pro, you guys discussed about Roger breaking down really a lot of the complicated stuff Ryan Julian talking about. And then the Academy is going to be the, the big piece on Pro, which is the Lex Van Damme course, really. And then we're also going to build, you know, listen, we don't have to add necessarily niche courses to any of the tiers. We're going to build them out separately. And if you actually want it, you can purchase separately and you can have a one or two weeks with you know, let's not tease out any names yet, but whether virtually or somewhere else, you can have a dedicated kind of cohort based education with them in person or virtual, where you go through their entire process with the community again. And I think if, you know, everybody learns just from watching Real Vision in general, but I think this educational tier is going to really turbocharge it for people. It's going to no, really, really we, help. Because what was amazing is. I, when we launched the exchange, remember, I thought I'd make a video. Well, I, thought, um, I thought I'd just post something and say, you know, what, what are you, who are you guys? And, and why do you use Real Vision? And what we came back was this ridiculous, oh. amazing, me, who our members are. I mean, George, other George is like, I don't know if you saw this, right? So these people, the first video came back was a neuroscientist from South Korea who's in the lab whilst watching Real Vision videos. There was an astrophysicist from the Atacama Desert working in the biggest telescope in the world, watching yeah. Real Vision videos, an ex-cab driver, a student, a product manager from Silicon Valley. And we were like, holy shit, who are these people? Because this is not normal. And yeah. I asked them who they were, what they all did. And basically we figured out they were all the learning tribe. All yeah. these people just wanted to learn. Do we have a copy of that video? Or am I being premature here? You're being premature. Again, story of my life. We won't it's talk funny, about that. It's funny, Raul. I, I, I do find that, you know, Real Vision is like, and I think also just, uh, you know, we touched on crypto earlier, but like the crypto community, Real Vision, which Real Vision is part of the crypto community, like it, it does attract curious people, right? Especially right now because, you know, the pandemic and everything and people freaking out a little bit and, and hence like the importance of education, but also just like, you know, 
I think if you're going to be someone uh, who feels empowered in this space, you have to be curious. You know what I mean? You have to, like for me, I, when I was like, okay, I'm going to start learning about this stuff. It's not that I'm like, I want to start learning about this stuff so I can go crush it in the markets. It's more just an open sponge of like, let me be curious. Let me have fun. Let me learn. You know what I mean? And then the, the other stuff will follow if I, if I lead with that foot. Yeah, I think part of it, and we identify this talking to people is sure. Some people want to invest better. Other people are just sensing there's something going on and they need to wise up. Right. They need to figure out, okay, what the hell is going on? How is it going to affect me? It could be my job, it could be my 401k, it could be whatever. And I think we've got to that point where everybody realizes that just hoping that your financial advisor figures it out for you right. is, stu is stupid. <laughs> Did I hear crypto? Oh, Did I just... Hey! <laughs> it's it's hey the guys. Ash, the man, the legend. How you doing? Uh, I'm still drinking tea. Do you know why? Because why? you're a wuss. Because somebody's got to do the work around here. We just wrapped. Uh, we just wrapped doing a Real Vision uh, daily briefing with uh, Ed and Peter and Jack. Oh wow! The whole the whole load of you. Yeah. So you you did. I was hilarious because so many people asked for the interview that you've just done with Charles Charles Hoskinson. Yeah. Hoskinson or Hodgkin, Hoskinson. Hoskinson. Yeah. And so I post it on Twitter, like, you asked for this, here it is. So I get a bunch of people going, oh, that's amazing. And a bunch of people saying, I hate you. I hate Real Vision. You've lost your way. <laughs> How can you have that? I'm like, yeah. and this is what we believe in, right, Ash? And this really crucial is we believe in letting everybody serious have a place and a voice and let everybody else make up their minds. But we're all there to learn. There is no truth in any of this Correct. No truth in financial markets the truth yeah. is we all have our own truths there's you know, only price powerful. there's no truth right yeah that's very there's well no. said and and by the way um you know charles hoskinson is one of the most serious people in the space and by the way it comes off the heels today uh, of releasing our video interview with andreas antonopoulos that was great as well if anybody's into learning and you're not sure about crypto watch the interview ash did today on real vision crypto yeah. with andreas antonopoulos it's unbelievably good i watched it at five o'clock this morning um i'd had my my second vaccine jab so i've been feeling terrible for 24 hours so i woke up early with a splitting headache what's that it's brilliant because the guy is such a communicator and yeah. it's mind-blowing where that whole space is going i mean damien and i for a long time have talked about wanting to have a crypto tier because we think it's the future it's all part of the same thing is the point they're not separate things no and it's now becoming very clear that it's all part of this bigger, bigger picture. Yeah, well, you Rob, know, you've been one of the leaders, by the way, in, in doing that, in making the macro case uh, for digital assets generally and Bitcoin more specifically. Yeah, I mean, well, I just say it's all part of the same thing. Yeah. Other George, yeah. not Stanoff, other George, do you think about finance like crypto versus other stuff as different things? Or do you no. just think of it... Ah, interesting. No, 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 no. I think it's, I think, I mean, again, the, here, here's the benefit though, for me is I came in to, you know, trying to take hold of my financial situation when crypto was already, you know, it's already, it, to me, it doesn't feel like a fringy thing. It's like, yeah, I'm going to have some percentage of my portfolio is in crypto. And a large majority of that should be Bitcoin because that's the safest crypto. And when people tell me, you know, if I say like Bitcoin is safe, is a very millennial, <laughs> I think, idea because to most people it is not at all you know what i mean um but that's how i found you guys and since we're on crypto right now we let's go ahead and just do another giveaway for uh this one is is exciting because it's four free passes to the crypto gathering the upcoming crypto gathering in 2021 yeah, that's gonna be yeah. awesome yeah i got to be a small part of it last year super cool really kind of the first of its kind in a lot of ways yeah um, yeah and really huge. I mean, it kind of took off in a crazy way we weren't expecting it it was an amazing experience for us as well Oh God, it, I, I think it, it, to me, like it blew up. I mean, I had friends of mine who are not finance people, like, you know, weird artist people texting me being like, dude, I saw you were in the crypto gathering. Yeah. Day. And I was like, oh, awesome. I've been on like TV shows. No one cares. I'm part of the crypto gathering, <laughs> which is pretty cool. Um, but let's just jump into this, to this giveaway. So real quick, again, I'm going to ask this question. Uh, here it is. You can see it on the screen and just put your responses in the chat addressed to all panelists. I'll read it out loud just in case for those of you who can't see. What was Real Vision's motto when Raul, Damien, Grant, and Remy first got, got started? Was it A, oh bloody hell, 
B, we know fuck about fuck. C, what would Milton do? Or D, we've gone on holiday by mistake. And again, put your answers in the chat addressed to all panelists. And we are going to pull out. This is, this is very real. We sat down. It was our very first kind of formal meeting. And uh, it, was, it wasn't, we didn't kind of adopt it as a motto. It was something that somebody said. And we all thought, do you know what? That's a really good mantra. And we've kept it. We still have it. In fact, I've got a poster of it on the wall just around the corner. I've got a poster in my office as well, above my yeah. desk. By yeah. the way, can we put a flashing lights warning on the chat because it's blown by so fast it may be a health <laughs> it's, it's unbelievable, isn't it? <laughs> so when did the prices so given George? Is that at the end? So we can announce we're gonna what what's gonna happen is they're gonna go, we're gonna go through the chat and pick out the winners, and I'll announce them kind of as we're moving along. So this is these are the winners to the first question. This was for the RV merch. We're still getting responses to the one that's up on the screen for okay. the way. Here, here are the winners for the first question. Uh, Lori Patterson, Sean Devenay, Paul Jogriner, George Blake, Taylor Cheney, Thomas Bruvik, Kevin Van Gretis, Francisco Franzoni, Diego Saucedo, and Alicia Yoder. I apologize if I mispronounced your names. Were, were they all chosen just on the basis of their surnames? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> just to make it difficult for you, George. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. <laughs> Damien, I have a serious question for you. Like, oh no, okay. What do I have to do to be eligible for merch? Like, if you send it to me, I'll wear it on the air. What, uh, what do I have to yeah. do to get some merch? You've got to be, you know, you, you're not I'm quite, sure. in, you're Dam not quite the influencer status yet, Ash, that we need. Damien <laughs> is very old fashioned. Just call him sir, he'll send you everything you want. <laughs> exactly. exactly. What's your address? I'll send it now. <laughs> <laughs> I was actually wearing an irresponsibly long t-shirt at a barbecue in, in, K in Grand Cayman last week. That is weekend. the best seller, by the way. The irresponsibly long t-shirt is the best seller by a mile. And everybody came up to me laughing, saying, of course you're wearing that t-shirt. I mean, I can't believe in Grand Cayman, I can't even walk around the supermarket now without people knowing who I am. <laughs> Not be because of everyone. Yeah, but there's only 100 in... people on the island, Raoul. So you, know, you probably employ Cayman. half of them. The difference about Little Cayman is nobody cares who I am. In Grand <laughs> Cayman. <laughs> By the way, my first trip to Grand Cayman to come down when I first started religion in 2017, I'm walking in, I haven't met you yet, and there's an enormous life-size six foot six inch poster of you in the Grand yes. Cayman airport. Yeah. Damon would like to tell you I paid for that, but it's not true. Oh. <laughs> People just put up know. People just put up posters of me all the time. I mean, it's just that it happens, right? <laughs> How many times, every time Raoul lands at the airport, he stands next to him and takes a selfie, I'm sure. <laughs> Absolutely. No, the poster's gone now, so I'm a nobody. But luckily- Yeah, because um, I paid for it to be taken down. <laughs> you never told me. <laughs> oh, God, God. But more whiskey for me, I think. So I, I got a question for, for Raul and Damien. I, I know you mentioned you guys were, you know, lived together in, in Spain and whatnot. But no, 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 we lived in the same village, George. We didn't live same together. He's got, a pink okay. jacket. He's got a pink jacket, but we didn't live together. Okay. Yeah, exactly. Was there like a, was there a sort of um, happy hour conversation like we're having now and not a, an in-person one, non-digital, that the worst, like, was the, the genesis of Real Vision? Did that the worst to one, there was, I, I would guess maybe a hundred, maybe 200 yeah. of these, right? So Damien and I would see each other all the time, barbecue. There was, there was a night when uh, my ex-wife was away and Damien's wife was away. I think they'd actually gone out together. So yeah. I went over to Damien's house and it was winter and he, yeah, look, your hair, your face. Oh. Is, oh. It was winter and he, he made this fire and the, the room was a bit too smoky. Yeah. And then Damien decided that, this is typical Damien, by the way, Look at the in the background, right? All of these stunts, the guitars and stuff, of which he can't play, and the camera, <laughs> all this stuff is all staging. So he turns up. We drunk like two bottles of red wine. He said, "Now, Raoul, we shall drink whiskey and smoke pipes, not weed, tobacco." Okay. So we're like smoking tobacco pipes with this smoky room, drinking whiskey. Oh, I spent honestly, four hours the next morning vomiting. It and that was, was one of these conversations. It was exact. And do you know what's bizarre? As you said that, I've just reached down into my drawer. Look. <laughs> that is it. I, on the other hand, have <laughs> How could you not have a pipe? 
They smell amazing. They look cool. Oh, I, because I live in the Caribbean, I have a Japanese tobacco <laughs> pipe, which is actually for weed. And it's a very elegant way. Honestly, it I think it's coming back. back. Yeah. It's coming back. But that was a hellish time. The, the, the next morning was, was hideous. I mean, that could have derailed the whole concept of Real Vision on its own. So in some ways you could say Real Vision came out of a nasty Raoul Pal hangover, essentially. P quite probably, yes. <laughs> Accumulation, <laughs> a cumulative process of cumulative hangovers. But what would happen is like, Damien and I actually lived in this village where, well, and the, the, the neighboring beach town, where not that many people were kind of involved in the outside world. They were all kind of restaurants, bars, tourism, property. And so we would love the kind of intellectual sparring because he was speaking to all these amazing brands doing marketing and strategic marketing and brand management and digital disruption. And I was in finance and I was very interested in where the world was going. So we would spend a lot of time talking about this stuff. And yeah. that, I mean, honestly, it came out of these conversations. It was a yeah. very clear path of, you know, Damon at one point was working on what they could do with Keith Richards' book. Could they embed, when, they, when it went digital, could they embed music into it and imagery and video? And we were talking about this multimedia world where all media is equal. And that's yeah. where we're getting to with Real Vision as well. You know, we have written research. Exactly we have, right. Um, the one thing we didn't really understand at the time, I think, was community. I think that's been the big breakthrough. That's the big change in media is letting... Yeah people get involved in their conversation, in the overall conversation, that everybody's yeah. opinions are valid and we can all learn from each other because everyone's- that was, a, that was a big turning moment. From day one, we would talk to the community and Raoul particularly, right? the next time we did anything new, and we did it this week where we launched the new uh, UX on the site, Raoul would make a video to talk about what we're doing and talk to the community. But for us, I think what the exchange has done is the community can now talk back. Even things like this with the chat, I mean, that's been the massive breakthrough, I think. And that's very, very important for us is it, it starts to become a, a two-way holistic experience for everybody. The hive, the hive mind, as I call the it. The hive mind, exactly right. And yeah. we're going to announce the winners of the, uh, the crypto gathering passes soon. Um, but I did want to sneak in this. Uh, we were saving this for the end, but uh, the V question, as we call it, which uh, we're not going to announce the winner for this uh, on air, but we're going to announce it next week during the daily briefing. So here's the question. Tell us your funniest, scariest, or most enlightening real vision moment that you've never discussed in public before. Okay. So um, some of you guys, if you want to, I don't know if, if any of our panelists have an answer to that. Uh, as our yeah, I've got one. I mean, there, sure. there was one we talked about that we we won't talk about. That was a really <laughs> horrific moment. But it was. But there was one where it was fun. we were going to launch a new channel called Real Vision Trader, oh. <laughs> and we, through conversations with people, it was decided that we should charge a lot more money for this. And we launched the whole campaign. And Damien and I called each other one, I was early morning for me, I called him up and went, we can't do this, Damien, if there's something wrong with this. No, we'd already done it, it was launched. Oh yeah, people have paid. We launched it. And yeah, it was live for was, three days. Yeah. What we did was the opposite. We threw it all in to the main channel and then cut the price to 200 bucks to say, this is wrong. We don't want to go this way. We want to go a different way. I mean, Real Vision Trader, that content, trading content, actually didn't work in the end. But I remember writing a big launch campaign. It launched, as George said, it was three days. It was live. It got great take up, but we knew it was wrong. And then I had to write this long email to everybody <laughs> saying, we've totally fucked up. We've realized our error of our ways. We're really sorry. You know, God, it was, it was a chaotic time. But I mean, throughout, really the, throughout the years, the most used subject line of our emails must have been, we fucked up. Like, <laughs> yeah. that, that, that truly is, that truly is the case. Well, because we have an honesty and integrity with our members that they allow us to try stuff, allow yeah. us to fail, and allow us to succeed and celebrate in that. And that's amazing. I remember, I remember a time when we were, we'd been thinking about the blacklist for a long, long time. So this is that super intimate group where 
you know, you get to go to an island, you meet, uh, you stay in beautiful hotels, eat at lovely restaurants. There's a really great group of super smart people. You, Mike Green talks, but then you get an hour just picking his brains, just chatting. You get dinner together. You can see, you know, it's a really special group. And we thought of this idea very early on. And I remember writing the launch campaign about you can come to an island like, you know, Cayman, you can meet these people, stay in these amazing hotels, great music. And we were about a day away from launch and I'd written it all. And then the Fire Festival video came out on Netflix. <laughs> and honestly, I read through all the copy again and I just thought, oh my God, it's the Fire Festival for finance. And I, honestly, I was in fear, fear. Oh when we launched that. But we're going to have another attempt at that. So we're negotiating now. I don't know if we'll get it across no, the stop. line. No, no. Oh, you're, you're doing, doing it right again. Here. You're no, doing no. it again. Shannon, you're doing Shannon's it. face. Stop. Shannon's stop. face is like, no, <laughs> do not talk. I have to speak up <laughs> here, Raoul. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. But yes, that is very exciting. And it is something we're talking about and taking very seriously. And um, <laughs> yeah, it was interesting hearing Hearing, hearing this idea for the first time via uh, Twitter, when you ask the whole world what they think, I'm like, well, guess we're doing an event in Cayman soon. <laughs> yeah, and a big event. Maybe. Allegedly, so allegedly. It allegedly, um, allegedly. I don't think we hold back on any event ideas these days. I think everything's on the table. <laughs> I know, but if we pull off what we're hoping, we don't even know. We've got the, the borders exposed and all sorts of stuff. We yeah. have no idea. If we pull off what we're thinking of, it's going to exactly. be the biggest thing. And in cool and fun and but look, we're, and our members have, for our members to say, be epic. we've yeah. been doing a pretty kick-ass job with virtual events over the past year i mean all things considered pretty it's awesome i mean changes, we we miss in person but virtual stuff has actually been really fun i mean look to be honest i, I wasn't prefer, super excited prefer, about it but i prefer it this is as much fun <laughs> as being at damien's got his pipe you're an idiot damien um <laughs> there is it's as much fun doing this than it is being together. I'm so used to Zoom now that yeah. I don't think of it any differently that you're on Zoom. I just think we're having a chat and a drink. Where's your and drink? Also, is there Where's an element like, what, you know, I was talking about like the crypto gathering earlier. Like, you know, if that was in person, would, would you have been able to get as many of these like deep talented crypto thinkers that you got. It feels like because it's virtual, you can, you know, in some ways it's limiting, but in some ways it's actually really expands the world. George, right? It was, it was so game changing for us because if you think of our old world, we had this beautiful kind of um, studio in New York that looked like Keith Richards apartment, <laughs> but to book somebody, they had to be in New York. Yeah. We had to have the ability to have somebody there to interview them. And I was not in New York. So it depends who was around. It was, a shit show, right. really hard. Suddenly, I can now get almost anybody tomorrow on Zoom. Right. But oh my god, it's a game changer. It's, yeah. It was a literal game. To, if you look at the sheer number of high quality guests and relevant topics that we get now, and timeliness, put, yeah, and, and timeliness as well. Yeah. It's, just, it's it's a game changer for us. I think especially on crypto it's been a huge boon to us because we're drawing now from a truly global talent pool. We have people who come on anonymously. We have people who come on uh, and don't disclose the location. I'm somewhere in Asia, but we're not gonna tell you where. Um, and I think that's something that's totally been powered uh, by, by Zoom, by but these remote also, videos. Ash, it's become so easy to book people yeah. that Real Vision Crypto is booked six weeks in advance, unless it's ultra important. It's booked six weeks in advance. I mean, Damien, you remember the old days, or George? Oh. I mean, it's like, oh my God, this is a nightmare. Scheduling, all gone. Well, and it's even only better for you organizing events, right? It's game changer. Yeah, exactly. And look, that's the big thing with the crypto gathering this year. We've decided to extend it to be three full days. That's how many great people we have involved and how many sessions we want to host. This so let me just um, give you guys a little sneak peek. This crypto peek. gathering is going to be insane, by the way. Insane. Yeah. Speaking of which, we have the uh, we have the winners of the crypto gathering uh, free passes. I'm going to just read the names out real quick. And again, you guys will be contacted afterward uh, to kind of work out the logistics. But the winners are: we have Brian Kirby, Corey Sancho, Diatuman Das, 
I, forgive me if that's the wrong, if I mispronounce it, Keith Bird and William Hackett. So again, you five are getting free passes to Crypto Gathering 2021, which is going to be awesome. And we will contact you uh, after the cocktail hour to work out the logistics. <laughs> And the crypto gathering is March twenty fourth to the twenty sixth. I'm giving you guys a sneak peek at the what, at the what brand. Was the what was the actual answer? Can you just clarify? <laughs> Shall I tell you? I'll tell you what the answer was. You tell me. Yeah, yeah go for the it. The answer was B, which was uh, we we sat there and and Raoul said, "So, who's made a video before?" We all said, "No." <laughs> okay, who's who's built a website before? And everyone said, "No." Okay, who's interviewed someone like for, for a video or no? And then one of us, and we don't know who, said, do you know what? We know fuck about fuck. And that is where that became our mantra in, in a very positive way. That if you know fuck about fuck, you do everything new. You challenge everything because you don't know the right way to do it. And also, and that, it's, it's a part of real vision is... There's no hubris, there's no gurus, there's no nothing. Everybody's trying to figure their own way about the world and we all know fuck about fuck. We're just trying to learn a bit more. Exactly and right. And Shannon, someone's, really... someone's just asked if I'm getting a pass uh, to the crypto gathering. I'll you know, be... you're not coming. Well, I doubt it. <laughs> I think Ash might have an appearance or two. You're not really involved in crypto, <laughs> Ash. Not much. <laughs> Can I Ash nap? is key. Ash is key to the crypto gathering planning. Let's not kid ourselves. <laughs> Ash, can hey, you look, speak? Uh, George, let me let me say one thing yeah, about events that I think is really really important because it's it's easy for us to get really excited and caught up in like yeah it was so cool we've done a great job but the really important thing about virtual events over the past year is that they've really added to Real Vision memberships. So if you're a Real Vision member, you have automatic access to the crypto gathering, despite your tier, Essential Plus, Pro, Blacklist, you have a spot to attend the crypto gathering as part of that. Uh, the other big event that we hosted last year was the Festival of Learning, massive event. And again, you know, going back to how important education is to us at Real Vision, um, this was a really important event. We are gonna be hosting that again, and we're gonna do it a little earlier. We're gonna do it June 9th to the 11th. So you'll uh, hear more from us on that soon. And that is part of your membership if you're plus tier or higher. So in having all this fun with events, we've actually really made the membership offerings even more robust and inclusive. And Shannon, when do we announce the, the, the speakers at the crypto gathering? Uh, next week is the goal. Next I think, week. Um, I think need what is your way. So Raul and I have this rule, and because I try really hard to stay you know, out of Raul's way, he's very, very busy. So once a week, I'll say, hey, are you ready for my question of the week? My one my one chance. Lately, that rule is totally out the window because I have so many exciting things to tell. And I'm like, hey, sorry to bug you again, but we just got I this think person we've got, on board. We've now got music at the event as well. You saw that email we got. We tonight. do. We're going to have some amazing music be part of the crypto. And like, if you've, con if you've attended any of our virtual events, Raul, you know how you much we work so music. In. That's important. Raul, Raul just can't <laughs> I'm hold okay back with on that anything, one. can he? I'm okay with that one. That one's okay. Oh, I'm excited. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> I'm so three glasses excited. of Bollinger in. Yeah. <laughs> All excited. And it's only 10 to 5. <laughs> okay, so speaking of drinking, George, I think we should do we should do the next giveaway, which is a little bit fun uh, to enter. Yeah, so we were just talking about the uh, Festival of Learning. So the next giveaway is passes to the upcoming Festival of Learning, which I think you, Shannon said was in June. But for this one, it's a fun one. All you got to do is tweet a photo of your cocktail that you're drinking with the, the party in the background, okay? And use the hashtag RV cocktails, okay? So tweet a photo of you and your cocktail with, the, uh, with this party in the background, hashtag RV cocktails, and three people are going to get passes to Festival of Learning 2021. Nice, that's clever. That's tricky. Raul, well, that means you too. It's quite funny, there's a bunch of comments like, when are people gonna talk about markets? I'm like, it's cocktail app. <laughs> I'm not talking markets. I am loving markets it. are <laughs> fucking closed. <laughs> yeah, go, markets are closed. Well, crypto isn't, but go back to Twitter. We're here to have fun and have a cocktail. That's yeah, go chat with Travis on Twitter. We are here to have fun. Yeah, there go find fantastic. Travis on Twitter and argue with him. <laughs> there are some fantastic comments going out there. We're going to get in so much trouble. Somebody asked what I'm drinking. So I'm drinking Talisker whiskey, if uh, whoever asked that earlier. There are some very good questions coming up, though. I'm drinking Bollinger. I'm drinking Bollinger because it's too early for rum. George, exactly. stand off. I'm drinking. I'm drinking. I'm drinking yours a cap up, basically. 
Very good. Like, Very good. I'm just, just drinking all my drink collection there, right? It will be replenished. It will be replenished. That's good. It needed. It was getting a bit dusty. It needed you to replenish. Correct. Correct. Yeah. yeah. I'm just so, watching. I'm just watching with glee how whenever the word crypto comes up, the chat explodes. <laughs> Yeah. On three. One, two, three. Great Crypto. job. Yeah. <laughs> there it is. There you well, I, I, I feel like you've become somewhat of a crypto, uh, you. you know, like celebrity. I mean, how does it feel to be to be that? Or do you even see yourself as that? Was that oh. to me? To Ash. Yeah, I feel like you, you're so... You're I, love so the, I love the fact that Ash didn't even realize that was the him. I, I, George, I don't leave my apartment. So, you know... But no one does right now. <laughs> I, I, you know, I'll believe it when I say it. I do feel like it'll be interesting for me to hear from you guys when like things do go back to normal and we're out on the street, living our lives a little bit more, uh, you know, normally, like are people going to pull you guys aside? And because you have your audience has grown so much. I feel like you, you are okay, sort of George, finance the George, ledger. One of my worst moments uh, in the history of Real Vision was I was in New York uh, we were near the Gramercy. I was with Raul. We went into a little tapas bar. Long day. We went for God, a drink. I forgot that place. It was such a cool bar, right? So cool. We, a, we were just saying a little Spanish remembrance, a bit of jamon, a bit of really nice Rioja. And we had just sat down, long day, and a bloke came over and tapped Raul on the shoulder and said, Are you Raul Pal? Oh my God, I love you. I love you. I love your stuff. And for me, sat there, that was just a terrible moment. Damien Raoul's ego. Hates just, it. <laughs> it's one thing in the comments on Real Vision, but when you're out in the middle of New York, it's obviously Raoul loved that. Loved that. And I hated that. That was a great moment. That's when you realise you're making a difference, where people are seeing it, noticing it. It's impacting, you know, real people. Somebody said, who's Damien Horner? <laughs> Sad. <laughs> right, Bill, I'm coming after you. I saw that. Your name hey, is Mark. So, so I want to hear. I want to hear Ash's answer to to the V question of the evening, which is, what's um, tell us tell us about your most memorable or surprising moment at Real Vision. I don't know if this is a memorable or surprising moment, but I was thinking about it. And what I what I really learned and. Um, for me, the biggest takeaway is at Real Vision, it's three words. It's don't plan, do. <laughs> and, you know, we I jumped on today the ex, the exchange um, with Weston Nakamura and we filmed what I hope will be uh, the first of many episodes. And, you know, we were talking about it and Weston said, what are we? I said, we're just going to do it. We're just going to jump on and do it. And I think that's the way we do things. Um, and in, I think that's where some of the energy and the excitement comes from because people, there's that fun of watching. It's kind of like watching a guy on a unicycle. I'm you never know. <laughs> The king of overprepared, right? You're the king of overprepared. So now suddenly you've learned to just wing it. It's natural. I hide that. That's in the background. The overpreparation, we try and hide that. You're very good at hiding that, I will say. <laughs> I would think like, you know, like the inside the actor's studios, James Lipton cards that I turn over. I can't have that on camera. But you know what? I think that's one of the things about Real Vision and about the guests as well is and we see it in the audience comments is, if it's too prepared, if it's too um, scripted, it, it just doesn't work. You know, the, 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 the best stuff is, is spontaneous and honest and authentic. It's only and because we neither really of us, hard. it's because neither of us will do any homework. <laughs> Shannon goes <laughs> mad with us because you won't listen. Exactly. Hey, Shannon, wow. do you ever find Rob Anderson in all of the crowd? Is he here? Let me let me take a look. But I actually, you know, speaking of how incredibly important our uh, contributors are around here, I have someone I want to bring into the conversation. Let's give him just a minute. Who's this? Uh, but look, speaking of planning events, I mean, the more contributors I have around to turn to and be like, hey, we're doing this thing in 12 hours. Can you be hey, part of this? Jason. Can you host this call for me? Jason. So, awesome. <laughs> Jason, the last time I saw you was doing this. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. I was actually thinking, it was so funny, Damon brought it up at the beginning. I was like, the first time Raul and I met, I go, hey, how is it to look at your fat face? That was my first question to him. <laughs> I didn't even like, I have no filter, unfortunately. And 
I actually, I look forward to, cause I, I keep looking at myself on camera and I, I look forward to the next five years when I, my, my face slims up like Raul says. <laughs> well, it's not going to work living in Sonoma, mate. It's never going to happen. We've it's had to like, pay for a special film in Napa. Well, I'm you're in, in Napa, Napa, Napa. You're in Napa, yeah. even worse. There's no chance yeah. you're to slim down in Napa. Exactly. And I was thinking about, go ahead, Damien, sorry. No, I said we had to pay for a special filter on Raoul's camera that slims him down. It's not real. It's, it's just, it's, it's like an Instagram filter. Don't worry about it. Yeah. We'll get he's you been, one. Uh, I think, I think he's, ha he's been coaching Mike Green on his diet. Mike's, Mike's looking fantastic. But Damien, he was making fun of your background and your fake setting. I'm just waiting <laughs> for that hotel to reopen after COVID and, and kick Raoul out of the lobby of that hotel. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> it's quite funny because everyone goes, why did you broadcast from a bar? I'm like, it's not a bar. <laughs> That's my kitchen over there. Everyone thinks it's this huge bar. It's not. It's my, it's my lounge. So, Jason, I was, I, I'm totally serious. I mean, you are one of those people that I so appreciate. And it's such a great thing that Real Vision really engages with contributors who are so willing to participate in so much. I mean, you are on the platform. You've helped with, I think, almost every event that we've planned. And you've gotten really ingrained we with the blacklist. You trapped him somehow, Shannon. He didn't realize what exactly. he was signing up yeah, for. Yeah, Jason, exactly. what, what you know, did you... Omnipresent. What did you what call, did what she did you have call on me? You? What did she have on you, Jason? He, he <laughs> called me a manipulation <laughs> wizard, I think. Yeah. Uh, but look, we, we truly are so incredibly grateful. Like, I, I hope that you, you know that and you'll continue letting me rope you in to things uh, on, on a whim. Exactly. I, so I told Shannon, I was like, I knew my girlfriend and her would get along easily because they're manipulation wizards. <laughs> of like, uh, especially like, of like the hedge funds, master of the universe type people, they, they really know how to like, really push hedge fund managers buttons and get them to do it, wrap them around their little finger. It's quite amazing. Hi. So uh, speaking of, uh, I, I mean it, we're, we're grateful and, and we have a little thank you. Uh, I've been scheming behind your back. <laughs> oh my God. How did you, like, this is insane. What is it? I thought I was just getting interrupted. I know it looks terrible, but this is the best thing in the world. <laughs> what is it? Oh my God, I'm so embarrassed. You that up? Now I hate you even more. I know, I knew you'd say that. <laughs> it's, a, it's a pie from Milk Bar. It's called the Crack Pie. It's oh, fucking yeah. unbelievable. Yeah. It's my, like, I, I'm not a sweet person. This is the best thing in the world. <laughs> oh my God, you just I've embarrassed been, the I've shit been, out of me. I'm sorry, I thought that would happen, but I had to keep Thanks. behind your Thank back you. big time. The word crack so pie has lit up the comments. <laughs> exactly. going, what? What the fuck? Is that legal? <laughs> exactly. It's not keto, I figure. No. It was crack pie, not crack pipe. Let's just be really yeah. clear here. <laughs> yeah. So Jason, uh, we're asking everybody the same question. So, so tell us your, your most memorable, surprising, kind of best experience with Real Vision. Because after you go, I want to say my answer because it has to do with something you were involved in. I have a little clip to play, but you go I, first. I hope, yeah, yeah, hopefully we're fun. Yeah, we're probably actually going to have the same answer, probably. Also, I love that everybody that knows Ash knows that Ash is working right now. If you just watch his eyes, I love it. It's a, it's a happy hour. And Ash, you see Ash's eyes darting back and forth as he's got his five computer screens going at once. Um, so speaking of Shannon's manipulation, she goes, hey, do you think you could do a live interview? And I was like, yeah, sure. Not even thinking about it. And then five minutes about before we're about to go on live, I realized, oh, shit, I've never done a live interview. I don't even know if I could do this or whatever. And at the time, the green rooms, we didn't have a green room. So I was going to go live with Hugh Hendry and I didn't see him or anything. They're oh, just yeah. like, they just start counting down. They go three, two, one, and you're oh. live. And I go to go into my intro and all of a sudden Hugh pops up and he's bleeding out of his forehead all over his face and he's just dabbing <laughs> the blood. And I'm just like in panic mode because my first live for Real Vision and I'm just like, uh, where do I even begin? <laughs> yeah, so let's just take a quick look. <laughs> Look at that fat face. <laughs> oh, look at you with the COVID haircut. Oh no! <laughs> <laughs> he says, I think I'm a bit concussed. I'm like, you sure you want to do this? I think he was he was trying to text Raul like on Twitter and everything, and Raul's like, you got the wrong Twitter handle. Oh, well, yeah, and that that is my story too. Because basically, everybody's like, "It's it's time to start. Why aren't we starting? Where is everybody?" And I'm like, "We're waiting for Hugh. Like, I have no idea what's happening." And then Raul sends me a screenshot from Twitter, and he's like, "Well, I figured out where Hugh is." And he's he's tweeting before he's even telling us, "Hey, I busted my head open out in the ocean this morning, and I'm going to be late." 
So I didn't even really know what was going on. But again, that's just a thing with events. You just kind of got to, well. Hugh, Hugh either <laughs> lives in a parallel universe or a different planet. <laughs> I'm not sure. Sean, yeah. do we have the, the Marty Bent one? Uh, I've got a screenshot of that. I'll pull it up. That was that was amazing. I mean, George, tell the story while I while I find this picture because that was amazing. Well, there are thirty minutes into an interview with Robert Breedlove for the for the crypto gathering, and Marty Bent is outside. I guess there's something happening in his home, and just suddenly starts just a Caribbean fucking jungle rain and wind, and he's just it's pouring on him. So his I don't know girlfriend or wife or whoever just can hands him an umbrella and he just goes like that and continue, <laughs> continues the interview for 30 minutes. <laughs> it is amazing. That's dedication, if I've ever seen it. By the way, yeah. after you mentioned that I was still working, uh, Devin tweeted uh, into the chat, Ash is so neutral, they're going to name the next Bretton Woods after him. <laughs> <laughs> the most neutral man in the world. Someone's just told me to take it easy on the Talisker. <laughs> I really yeah. I'm full glasses. I'm actually quite enjoying this. It's like it's ten o'clock in the at night here, so I'm fully ramped up. It's Friday night. I am just letting go and enjoying. I'm thinking you're seven o'clock too early to go to bed. <laughs> Never. Never. Do you guys do you guys still own your homes in Spain? Do your your uh your adult bunk beds in Spain? Do you guys still have them? Yes, <laughs> Double bunk yeah. beds. yes. I'm on the bottom bunk. Uh, yes, still got it. Yeah. Is this like it's like Casamigos? You guys just need to start a liquor brand that like incorporates <laughs> your two houses. We should do that because I don't know if I have, love I you or hate you sold, for that comment. I still haven't sold that house. I may end up sharing it with my ex-wife, and so that would be end up it, is, Sorry? it is just around the corner from mine, so that would be nice. Actually, I would like that. That'd be good. Yeah, no, we still get out there. We've still got places. We both speak Spanish. You know, we, we do the whole, well, you know. You speak Spanish with a really heavy Valenciano accent, like a <laughs> like a grape farmer. <laughs> and I speak yeah. really bad Spanish like a tourist, but so loosely. In yeah, we would get by. We were in, uh, we were in uh, near Denia, Denia and Javier on that, somebody asked, on that coast, on the, on the Valencian coast. So an hour down from Valencia. Valencia, estuvimos ahí. So that's where we were. At a very, John, that's, they're that's getting started. I mean, we want to do an origin video where off. we go back and film the bar <laughs> and create a whole. I'd love to do that, like an origins video documentary. Oh, somebody's just typed the Molly Blank in there, which is yes. the nightclub in Oh Havie. my god! I don't know who yes. did that, but love you. Yes, Chris <laughs> Robson. That's that's yeah. Uh, fantastic. John, they're getting uh, they're getting a bit drunk. Why don't you bring? Uh, yeah, the, the, the other uh, the other yeah. guest. So, you know, Raul, going back to what you were talking about early on in this conversation, the importance of community. And I mean, I think that's starting to reach everything that we do at Real Vision. You know, it's a really big part of what I do with virtual events and obviously oh, we got, with- we got um, Jimmy Boy. Yeah. <laughs> oh, there he is. Hello. <laughs> Are you drinking Drink Campari? Ribena. Have I converted you to Campari? He's on you're mute. You're James, on mute. You're on mute. James, you're on mute. You're like on a mute, true girl. professional, you're on mute. <laughs> Give him a second. Usually I'm just using my iPhone. Sorry. No, it's uh <laughs> you got what it? is that? No, what is that? This was like before Apro, oh. they always would make spritzes right. with collect. Oh nice. That was dangerous. That's a amount of taste Highly suggested. So hi. What's going on? Hi. Hey, <laughs> you have no idea that? what you just walked into. <laughs> James, how was the Campari soda I introduced you to? That was a... Uh, it was a solid everyday drink. I'll give you that. You know, it's a light, refreshing, good way to kick yeah. off at the start, right? Yeah, it's perfect. And uh, we we just I just finished trading that wild market close, and it's only like you know four o'clock where I am, so just getting the night started. And uh, figured <laughs> I'd spruce it up a little bit, show a little skin. Who knows? <laughs> Talking about George's getting... style. You know, talking of just getting the night started, we have a Real Vision Clubhouse coming up at 6 p.m. today. But John, wow. Ash, you're so goddamn professional. <laughs> I find it so disorientating. I'll be slurring if I did that. <laughs> exactly. By the way, the most common question we get on Clubhouse is, where's Ralph? 
No, the most common question is something about crypto. State. Yeah, that's true. And the no matter episode. what, it's about crypto. Yeah. I was just so we're doing... this is like the worst Brady Bunch sequence I've ever seen. <laughs> <laughs> By the way, I have to say, I just we have actually two clubhouses tonight. One at 6 p.m. Eastern time. This is the Real Vision clubhouse. And then I'm doing a clubhouse with Dimitri Kofinas at 9 p.m. Eastern time to follow up on a ground floor consensus podcast that we did uh, for Real Vision that came out earlier this week. You so obviously don't drink as much as we do because there's no way I'm doing a clubhouse at nine o'clock. No, we are drinking in one hour. No. Yeah, you're in Miami, George. We've lost you. Yeah. You're written off until Wednesday generally now. We should, uh, <laughs> I just got the info on the winners of the Festival of Learning uh, passes. So I just want to announce that real quick. Um, these are the Twitter handles. It's at Derek Uzzel, at J Alexander 1008, and at Critiques for Geeks. So, congratulations to you guys. And you're, those are the Twitter handles. The real names are Derek Uzzel, J Alexander, Stephanie Grayson. The three of you have won passes to Festival of Learning 2021. And someone for Real Vision is going to reach out after and get you, get you all the details. So, congrats to those guys. Hey, James. Yeah. You've become kind of this underground celebrity that came out of the exchange. Yeah. We launched this thing, which was clunky, doesn't work properly. And it kind of is working amazingly. And, and you've done, I mean, uh, your videos are fantastic. Yeah, love it. So I do one where I'm behind the bar making a Campari. You then make your own. You've done <laughs> interviews. You do these kind of daily journals about being a trader. Yeah. I mean, it's amazing. Tell people who haven't seen you what you actually do and then how you're using the exchange because you're kind of groundbreaking all of this. Yeah, well, I'm just a, I'm a trader. Uh, I was in Chicago. I'm in California now. So I, I'm a futures trader. Uh, just kind of, you know, day trading my life away and uh, kind of like you guys mentioned earlier, found Real Vision during all the chaos last year when I was like, what the fuck? Um, and, <laughs> you know, so I joined somewhere around March. Um, I w I've always been in the camp of giving, uh, like, without asking for much in return, which is weird on the trading floor because very, people are very private with um, what they do. And historically, I'm sure you're used to that. So on the exchange, um, it's kind of set up well for somebody like me who just figured I would just like kind of, I, I have no problem being like vulnerable or whatever. So I just put out stuff and... Uh, you know, to answer like the question you've been asking everybody, I think that's good for people to hear is like, I just made a bunch of videos on my iPhone, like filming my feet when I was running around Chicago. That was pretty much the point of it. And out of that came uh, a chance to sit down and talk with you, Raul, for 45 minutes. I did um, some interviews with some good poker friends. I got to talk with Tony Greer, um, really liked, enjoyed him. And we did like another 45 minute chat and I've developed really good relationships with uh, a couple of the guys on the exchange. So out of just giving and giving and giving without really caring what I got back. Cause I have my own thing going on. Um, I got a lot in return. So. Yeah. But more than that is you've kind of helped you Western um, Jeremiah. There's a whole bunch of you. Yeah who've started seeding what a community is all about, which is you give. And if you just keep giving in the end, people will give back to you. Yeah. And before you know it, network effect happens where suddenly 20 people are doing it. I mean, you started when there was very few people really doing stuff on it. Mm. It's growing. I'm looking at the numbers every day and they're going up and up and up. As more and more people start posting, asking questions, getting involved with it, it's amazing. And you've been a great part of this. It's been fantastic. Yeah, happy to do it. I think I'm overall down money on Real Vision ideas, so my tuition's a little more expensive than other people's. But, you know, whatever. Happy well, what's to do interesting it. is the Real Vision bot that uses, you know, from um, Moritz and Moritz, who yeah. they scrape all the data off the exchange from that survey, plus our guests. They put it all into this algorithm. The Real Vision bot spits it out. And the exchange has outperformed the S&P, their algorithm, and all of the guests on Real Vision. That's fucking incredible. Yeah. <laughs> so this, this reminds me, before I forget, Damien, Moritz and Moritz reached out, we should have merch with the Real Vision bot. 
the logo. Uh, yeah. I've, got a, I've got a giant picture. They sent me the, that piece of original art with yeah. me in the box yeah. and all of the stuff. So I've got it framed and it's just been put behind my desk in Grand Cayman. That's a nice idea. In fact, can I just say, if anybody has, uh, so we were just mentioning earlier the irresponsibly long t-shirts, which is the biggest merch product. But if anybody has ideas of stuff they would love, hats, mugs, cups, whatever, just, just ping them over to us or to me and we'll have a look at it because it's just really nice as, as Raul talks about the hive effect, the hive mind to get ideas. Hang on a minute, I'm about to be usurped by Ed. The big Ed is coming in. You know, there were so many questions saying- People have been asking Ed? for Where's him. Where's Ed? Where's Ed? Where's Ed? That was Ed though, I think, wasn't it? Or his <laughs> mum anyway. Ed? That's the Milton version of Ed. Yeah, that's right. We just need the mouth doing that. He's on mute. I don't know. We've got a picture of Ed. Thank you, Ed. <laughs> yeah. It's, it's, it's Ed's teaser campaign before the main release. <laughs> Sorry, I'm, I'm on my, my phone here because I had this wild dog who was in my house going all over the place. That's so. your wife, that's your wife, Ed. That has no way to talk about your family, Ed. <laughs> and, and by the way, when you were talking about irresponsibly long, I was thinking that my wife would never allow me to wear a t-shirt like that outside. <laughs> well, there's different interpretations. <laughs> where's, your, where's your video, Ed? Uh, it is, I, I'm still, I'm on this phone. I'm still trying to get it all sorted out. Ed MVP, as somebody said on the comments. I don't know if it's minimum viable product or most valuable <laughs> exactly. product, or both. <laughs> Either work. <laughs> somebody said Ed, hey, stop, hey, being, hey, somebody hey, said hey. Ed stop being a boomer. <laughs> <laughs> Ed, I've never seen you like that before. Yeah, see, I've, I've gotten out of the basement. I'm, I'm now in the uh, the living room. Wow. Oh how, how, why did they yeah. let you up? Why did they let I, you up? I, it's because uh, my, my wife, she took the dog and uh, and they, they've gone for a walk. So I, I, I've got my 15 minutes of, uh, of of living room time here. I like these glasses. <laughs> they make you look intelligent. Oh, and yeah, the glasses. Is. Oh, you like that? Actually, I just got these uh, two days ago. Progressives, cool. by the way. Right, you know, they look good. <laughs> oh, I tried that, but that made me dizzy. And particularly when you have a drink, you don't know whether you're long sighted and short sighted. It was like, no, it doesn't work. And, and Ed, have you been jogging or what is that top? Have you been for a run around the block or is this is this fashion? It, it, it's to make me look really athletic when, I, when I'm not doing any sports. <laughs> okay, very good. <laughs> <laughs> Very, very good. What, what are, are you drinking, drinking Ed? Ed? What, what are you drinking? It is, uh, it is uh, the Merlot. cheapest red wine. Th this is how it works, is, is that we, uh, we go to the, the grocery store, we get 10 bottles of, of massive bottles of wine and, and drink as much as we can and then come back, you know, two weeks later, three weeks later. That, that's, our, that's our MO. That sounds like my parents in Spain <laughs> are a true boomer. My parents go to the supermarket, look for, can they get Rioja for three euros? They then buy three cases of it, drink it in an afternoon, and then go back to the supermarket. <laughs> oh, God. So, I, Wait, so, Ed, I need to know what kind of dog you have. I feel like everybody needs to know this it, information. It is a Shorky. Uh, this is a <laughs> uh, you know Yorkshire Terrier Shih Tzu mix. And awesome. it, he was, uh, let's see, what's today? The 26th, is it? He yep. was one one year old uh, two days ago. So one year we had a, a birthday party for him. Of course uh, you did. It's good. I love it. Well, hey Ed, you've had you've had a big year around here. I mean, I think um, over the past year, the daily briefing has become a, a must see. So curious to get your thoughts on that. Why why did we start it? How well is it going? What are you excited about? Yeah, that is good. You know, I, I think that uh, Raul, he was chomping at the bit to do a, uh, a daily program because uh, I, I actually had him on a show that I used to do, you know, four or five years ago. And he was like, yeah, we, we need to have a daily. Uh, when COVID happened, it was clear that the interview series, uh, you know, it was very uh, macro. But at the same time, people were like, shit's happening now. Uh, we want to know what's happening right now. So we, we launched the Real Vision Daily Briefing because of that. 
And it was a very MVP, you know, uh, minimally viable product type of thing that we just launched and it worked right from the beginning. Uh, I, I, I think that in terms of the change of uh, Real Vision, it's been the most, uh, you know, the, the biggest thing that we've been able to do because now we can look at things from two different perspectives, you know, both in terms of actually what's happening the here and now, and also, uh, you know, sort of the super macro long-term kind of view. I think it's a great thing. I think it's, yeah, I mean, it's something I, I tune into as a, as a fan of Real Vision a lot. And I've always wondered that I wanted to ask you, like, if you, let's say you do three or four daily briefings in a row, three days in a row, right? Like, I know things, it's been a crazy year, but if it's a slow week, do you feel like, ah, oh, shit, I'm just going to come on and say the same thing I said yesterday. Like, do you feel pressure to, like, have new opinions every single daily briefing, especially if they're like, if you're doing a bunch in the same week? Yeah, you know, I think that's why it's good to have external guests uh, because they can, uh, they can give you something extra because they're not necessarily saying the same thing, especially if you have guests who are coming at it from a different perspective. You know, like this past week, we had Tom Thornton. We had uh, also uh, Jim, uh, Jim Bianco. And I think we had one other person on Wednesday. I'm just forgetting. Oh, no, we had Jared Dillian. I mean, totally different points of view. Uh, I mean, for me, I'm thinking about uh, credit the whole time. I mean, credit or, or rates, was, they were driving the action from my perspective. And so I felt like this is my wheelhouse. But other people are looking at it from different perspectives. They have different things that they're looking at. And I think it's always interesting, irrespective of, you know, how fast the market's moving, if you can get that generation of different views yeah, that people who are looking at it from from different uh, lenses, and and so I like that. The one lens that we're missing most, I would say, is FX. I'd like to get a few more FX people into into the mix. If any FX would move, yeah, because yeah, I mean, you know, <laughs> FX is uh, suddenly now. Now we're not even talking about uh, what happened to the conversation about uh, what drink we're having. Now we're talking about markets. Let, let's, yeah, please, uh, let's not. <laughs> <laughs> what are you drinking? My eyes are going to glaze over. <laughs> you're, in, you're in Napa Valley and you're not drinking wine. What are you drinking? It might be a sore point that he's actually not in Napa right now. Yeah, but they, uh, it's actually, <laughs> it's, a, it's a vermouth and tonic with a little bit of bitters. And my neighbor that makes wine, he huh? uh, uses these leftovers to make vermouth out of. So, and he drops them off at our house for us. So. It's not very, a bad life. It's very sophisticated. For the lumberjack shirt that you're wearing, I didn't think you'd be that sophisticated. <laughs> <laughs> I want to think it's probably awesome. to like get Shots like when you can all the Real Vision family can be in the same place physically. I mean, as much fun as, as Zoom is and everything, like when's the last time you all actually like went to a real happy hour in the same location wow. together? Fuck, I've no idea. George, when, when we you are were in Dallas, we up, had a... Which I know we're not allowed to talk about, Shannon, but we are lining one up for, for staff and subscribers, aren't we? Mm -hmm. no, no. We're, try we're trying to, we're trying to. Okay. Whoa, what a tease. <laughs> Where's this going to be? This is going to be fucking epic, James. It's going to be what I can tell you. If we pull this off, it's going to be amazing and everybody's going to be there. Party, party, party. Location, location to be it's determined? It's going to be the or... fire festival. No, we're not oh, using that. Show. No, no, no. Oh, it's going to be a disaster. <laughs> it's going to be huge. It's going to be such a riot. Bigger than Pompeii. In the in, in the sunshine <laughs> on a beach. Put it that way. Ash seems Answered really excited. by Bollinger. I think we're making Ash very uncomfortable. Do we do we have disclaimers? Do, we, disclaimers do they do they have do they have <laughs> broadband? <laughs> do they have broadband on the beach? Yeah, well, we'll have to figure out the daily briefing. <laughs> Ash, what are you drinking? Like, uh, I don't, I don't see the, you, you, I don't see the drink. What, what's just, going on I just, there? I just finished up my final green tea of the day. Come on, so cute. Ooh. I got a host. Too. Ash what's is so empty. It's like I'm flat. also hosting Clubhouse at six. And has nice. anybody okay. seen Ash? <laughs> has anybody seen Ash after a few drinks? I really would love to know. <laughs> The you know. other side of Ash. You know what, I, think I have. A very I have. Good challenge, James. A good gaunt the gauntlet has been thrown down, and I think we should make that one of the features of this event. Well, he's very, you know, he's very professional and good and good at what he does. But everybody wants to know what's behind 
the thing behind him too, that wall. Exactly. We don't know. Yeah. And, uh, <laughs> and we want to know what he's like, you know, after a few drinks. The gimp suit is behind there. It's actually, <laughs> it's actually, it's actually just two more bookcases that I haven't had the time to stack with we, books. Yeah. Yet. We know it's the filing cabinets. <laughs> <laughs> we know. Ash, I remember when you changed your your background. Uh, there we go. <laughs> there's, yeah, there's <laughs> the filing cabinet. Do you remember? That's he looked like he was in a prison cell for accountants before. <laughs> yes, that's how it felt. <laughs> Ash, you should you should make a poster of the filing cabinet and keep it in the background so that we have a picture of it whenever you're doing it. That would, there are people who want the filing cabinet to be there always. Oh, Damien, make a shirt with filing Church. cabinets on it. <laughs> yeah, that would be a shirt. That's yeah. a great idea, James. Yeah. Just with filing cabinets. And yeah. <laughs> Hey Ed, um, we're getting a lot of people requesting that you answer the uh, the V question, which is just you know what's your most memorable or uh, craziest real vision memory that you haven't spoken about in public before? Yeah, that is interesting. Uh, uh, I'll have to think about this. Uh, let's keep on talking, and as soon as I figure it out, I will. I'll uh, jump into the conversation because uh, yeah. I'm sure that there's some seriously crazy. Uh, it, probably it's like the elevator and stuff like that. Uh, but I, I, let me think about that for a second. George, have you answered that yet? the first time I persuaded you, Damien and I, I think Damien was with me. Oh, yeah, yeah that actually is pretty serious. We took Yeah, you so to the first time that I talked to you guys about uh, Real Vision, and th this is like uh, before I came on, uh, oh, you know, I, I, I had like a, uh, a massive uh, cycling accident. I was going like uh, 20 miles an hour. And uh, as I, I went over this massive bump and just like, you know, uh, it really tore up my leg and I was on crutches and uh, Raul was like, come on up to, uh, you know, to New York and meet us to talk about real vision. And uh, I was hobbling over to, to meet Damien and Raul one drink after another. It was quite the occasion. We're, I have to we had say. that amazing steak as well in Italy, yes. Manzo, the restaurant. Yes. Yes, that was a good night, actually. Yeah. Good night. You know, Shannon's upset for me bringing this up, but I was thinking about the Casamigos tequila, and then it just dawned on me, <laughs> Damien did that great piece on rum, and so maybe yes. instead of the Spanish house, you guys could use the Cayman house, and you guys could start the rum brand. Do you know what? Jason, I think you, you're on something there. What, so Jason, sort of real vision. Let's get into rum and rum. Uh, uh, is Damien did this whole piece. In fact, somebody hit me up on Twitter. Uh, on LinkedIn and said, I'd love for you to make videos for us, but I can't pay you. I'm like, oh, fuck it, I'll give it to Damien. So pass it on to Damien. <laughs> Damien <laughs> negotiates a barrel of their best rum as Holy payment. Shit. But this is collector's grade rum. I mean, this is serious shit. Is and where, is, and where is this barrel? Is it in Texas? Out of curiosity. Columbia. It's just Columbia. Right behind Raul, yeah. yeah. <laughs> exactly. I was hoping it was with Derek. <laughs> no. Unfortunately, it's not with our financing, but I think Raul's got a special bottle. I mean, this, is, this stuff is worth tens of thousands of, of dollars per, per bottle. So we got its Dictador rum from... Um, to Columbia. Columbia. So we've got a special limited edition. So Jason, yeah, it was spot on, right? So we've actually got cases of this stuff, a whole barrel bottled for real vision, especially for Damien doing this thing in yeah. lieu of payment. But you know what? We should give away one of those bottles. Oops. I mean, not, I mean maybe yeah. now. <laughs> Shit. Oh, sorry. Maybe yeah. oh, you can give it away to me if you like. Our big Caribbean event that we're not allowed to talk about. Okay, okay, hold on. Yeah, since since we're talking about giving away alcohol, let me just say one quick thing. Disclaimer. Give away terms. Give away <laughs> terms. <laughs> Comments going like crazy. I will, I will totally mute you, Damien. Giveaway terms and conditions can be found at realvision.com slash cocktail hours. <laughs> <laughs> All right, now go back to giving alcohol has, away. Has Derek, has Derek been like, Shannon, make them stop. Shut this them up. Illegal. Yeah, illegal. I got one, one all-caps message. Just Damien, one. You got, okay. you got the first. I'm going to mute you, Damien. <laughs> <laughs> Next. 
who's next? Okay, so someone on our team who has yet to join has an excellent answer to uh, the question of the evening. And any guesses who this person might be? Max Wi-Fi. <laughs> oh yes, that is right. Yes, it is, he is Max. An excellent answer. I don't know yeah. what you mean. There he is. <laughs> Hello, everybody. I'm actually in the New York offices alone. Uh, as I am often when I come into the office, I'm the only one who looks close enough. Oh. Well, I turn the I turn the boardroom into my office, and I say I probably won't deserve an office this nice for at least twenty years. So I'm going to take advantage <laughs> of it while I can. So I've got my whole spread out here. The whole fridge is mine. I, I'll never have it this good again. So why not? Just act the part, play the part, you'll get the part. That's all you have to oh, do. Oh, I pace back and forth, call contributors. You know, I've got these hedge fund guys. Like, <laughs> I think I got a spot for you, but like, you know. You got Jason Buck on line one, Mike Green on line two. <laughs> yeah. I don't know, I'm busy. I'm I sorry. I just, Stop I just calling don't have a spot for you. Like, sorry, that's my wife. So, Max, what's your, uh, what's your answer to the V question? Oh, the, the real vision, the real vision moment. Yeah. yeah. Um, well, okay, so there's there's two. There's you know the kind of light bulb moment. I think it might have been in the Kyle Bass Mark Cuban video where Mark Cuban was like, "My friends, we're buying ports. Like we're not buying stocks. Like it was just like we're buying. There are asset classes that we buy that you guys don't even come close to." And it just kind of made me realize like the levels, the, the different levels. And it, and each time you learn something with real vision, it's, it feels like a step backwards because it just opens up this new level of the atmosphere that you didn't know existed. And so <laughs> that was the one where like, I thought this was the limit, this was the sky. And then it just kind of opened that door. So that was the big one. The scariest moment was the New York offices. I got stuck in the elevator uh, we went down, there was this great beer store under the office. It lasted about three months and we would go down at five 30 while we were waiting for the, the final videos for the day to export. Um, and we came back up with our beers and we got stuck at like the top and the fire department had to come let us out, but we had our beers. So it was, it was okay. Cause at least we had that, but that was probably the scariest moment. Was getting let I have out. a, uh, I have a one with Max though. That just reminds me of, cause it was also funny and embarrassing ones. And Max was doing a live with Matt Rao. And Max was telling a story at the very end talking about what his baseball coach used to tell him. Sometimes you just need to get hit by a pitch. So he says to Matt Rao, as my baseball coach says, I hope you take one in the ass today. <laughs> did, you mean, did you mean this? Baseball pitch, <laughs> that's the best of both worlds. So I'd say put yourself in a position to get hit by as many pitches as possible and you'll probably win a lot of games. Yeah, well, I hope you uh, took it in the ass, or God. <laughs> I'm sorry, Max. I had to. I... Well, live is so a Max, what did you whole different. That one, that is the memorable moment, right? We didn't there. coordinate yeah. that at all. I swear, we did not coordinate that. <laughs> like, that I swear. I want to watch. I want to watch a sporting event with Max and just listen. To <laughs> like, oh, that guy took one in the ass right there. Look at that. <laughs> It's where the most meat is. If you're going to get hit by a baseball, you want to get hit where the meat is. And <laughs> right there on Careful, the Careful, you might do a second one live. Careful. Yeah. yeah. By the way, Damien, to quote Max again, a pretty good title for a show, The Light Bulb Moment. Oh, I thought you were going to say, take one in the ass. I was saying, no, no, no. I'm trying, I'm trying so hard to pull us out of the gutter, Damien. <laughs> well, the, yeah. The light bulb moment. Well, Shannon, did you ever have that video of when Grant and I tried to talk about Ted Rogers <laughs> University? Cried your eyes out. Yeah. yeah. Because, please, so, Ted Rogers uh, University is like a university in Canada, but Ted Rogers <laughs> was the host of a really bad game show called yeah. Dusty Bin, and he did this three, two, one. So we couldn't actually say the name, and we were weeping. It took us an hour to get the words Ted Rogers out. You, when I, when I first met you at a conference years ago, you and Grant were both speaking and it was the end of a three day in-person massive event and I was exhausted. So anything was going to make me laugh, but you were just giving Grant such a hard time and all of us ended up crying. So I think it's just normal when you two were around each other years ago to just lose it. I might have that video, but you'd need to 
talk amongst yourselves. Let me see if I can find oh, it. Please find that. I just remember so yeah, people, no I'm, pressure. I'm looking for this. I'm looking for it. Yeah, uh, George. Help Franz, me who was the. I, the I'll go to the company Slack channel. One. Someone, someone has it, surely. Franz was just getting so pissed off with us. Oh, by the way, half, half, half the company is drunk Natasha, on Slack I love and you. just commenting. And... Natasha's, Natasha came through per usual. Give me a second. Oh, half the company's drunk on Slack. Uh, yeah. 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 My, hey, yeah. it's a Friday. It's a good day. We're celebrating. It's been a big year. My most Stop embarrassing video moment has never seen the light. Of Give day. us a moment. Well, it's never seen the light of day on Real Vision. I had gotten really severe food poisoning, and I actually wound up taking an ambulance to the hospital later in the day. And for longtime Real Vision subscribers, you'll know the show. There's a show called Expert View. And Expert View, the host is off camera, and the guest is on camera, and they're just talking. And so when you see the video footage from the archive that has never been released, it's the guest who's actually a friend of mine, a guy named Fraser Rice, and he's sitting in the video and I say, uh, excuse me for one second, I, I just, I'll be right back. And then you see this extreme close up of Fraser's face and you hear this ungodly retching sound coming from the background as I'm throwing up in the bathroom. And you hear, and you hear like Fraser just looking back and forth kind of nervously and he says, Listen, I don't want to tell you guys how to do your job, but maybe we should turn the cameras off and then the screen goes black. It's never emerged. I'm pleased, but we could probably dig it up. I think we will. I think we will. All right, I got it. Oh, uh, lovely. There's Fat Boy. Wow. <laughs> Jeez. Look, at that chin. Look at those chins. <laughs> Tell me if you can't hear it. I'm pretty sure I did this right, but tell me if you don't hear anything. <laughs> not quite, nothing's happening. Can hear it. Yeah, just, that's 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 all that's all like a big I know. Dusty bin. Okay. And in first place with the ten thousand. So I, I wasn't ready. And in first place with the ten thousand dollar prize was this. <laughs> <laughs> so cute. <laughs> Okay, come on, no dusty bins, no dusty bins. <laughs> Ted Rogers is an English game show host from the Really 70s. bad as really well. Really bad. Okay. Ted Rogers is called Matt. I can't <laughs> say it. I can't say it. Oh, we've got to get through this or we're going to start sweating through our shirts. Come on. Come on. <laughs> oh, Jesus. Okay. Ha! <laughs> <laughs> huh? Okay. <laughs> I'm just imagining Ted Rogers teaching all management. We're professionals. <laughs> I wish it. <laughs> Stop it. Stop it. Stop. <laughs> oh no. Ted, I can't listen. I'm not going to say it. I'm not going to be able to say it. Do you want me to do it? <laughs> Come on. Trying. Okay. Okay, so I personally do not do well in situations like this where people can't stop laughing. I will switch to tears and it almost happens just now. So we dodged a bullet. Oh, <laughs> so good. Max doesn't even have a smile on his face. He's just like, yeah. I was just looking at the comment that was they want the clip of the the now infamous Ed Harrison fart. That happened. Oh, on yeah. the daily briefing. I, I was on that daily briefing. I'm sure he farted. He and so I'm, just, I'm just trying to think about. I think Ed denies the fart. That how much fart. we know. Fart gates. Fart gates. I, I, I should go down and and, and recreate because uh, people are like you know like uh, I, I want to see the uh, the leather chair that you were in so that. That we know that you're. <laughs> you, you, <laughs> uh, I, 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 I'm gonna, I'm gonna make my way down because <laughs> I did notice you doing that, which right. <laughs> it's absolutely a race to the bottom. Subject, quick. Race to the bottom. <laughs> it is. <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm gonna have to uh, defend myself by by going down to the scene of the crime, the so-called crime. <laughs> That's why you're not in the basement anymore. Poor <laughs> <laughs> dog, still blame. I've got a question for you that I think a lot of viewers wonder, which is, what's the story behind your bracelets, man? 
Like to me, when I saw that, I was like, this guy is so, he's like, you're like, to me, you were like, it screamed like finance guy who goes to Burning Man. You know what I mean? Like, I was like, this guy's cool. What's the deal with those bracelets? So I started collecting bracelets traveling. So I would go to places like India, I'd pick up bracelets because I used to work for Goldman Sachs and I needed to wash myself, cleanse myself. So I would start collecting this stuff. So it's happened to that. That one is my latest one. And that is because two weeks ago, a week ago, Iggy Pop, who lives in Grand Cayman, played a charity gig where he was telling stories. We had four local bands and he would join them on stage for 200 people. And we had a, a thing from Iggy Pop. And so that was the last one. But these are from all around the world. So I've, I collect them. Just a part of my travels and part of beach life. George, have you ever seen? <laughs> I, I, I was laughing so hard because you ever seen? Lana the, has the, just said. Sorry, Lana's just said um, merch bracelets. That is a really nice there you idea. Go. That's a great idea. That is George, a great. Seen, uh, thank you. I'm going to do that. That's a great idea. Have you seen that Daniel Tosh bit where he's he's making fun of? Um, the Pirates of the Caribbean, Johnny Depp. He's making fun of Johnny Depp. And he goes, how does this asshole leave his house? He's putting on bracelets by his door and go, no, not six, seven, seven bracelets. Seven bracelets, the right number. I'm on, I'm on one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. 10 currently. They vary. If I get down to four, I feel naked. Um, 10 is excessive. <laughs> It's funny because it makes me trust you more. I it, like, it, it, like <laughs> as someone who's not involved in finance, I'm like, I have a, probably a stereotypical view of like finance bros. And yeah, then I see George, you. George, yeah. is that because you think he's some kind of gypsy fortune teller who's going to see the future? <laughs> it's a cross generation about, thing, right? The British it's... accent too. It's like very soothing, you know, like Raul could tell me to like jump off a, a building or something. If he does it with a smile, I'll do it. It's like, yeah. it's insane. Listen, he says that to me all the time, and I refuse. What's the line from What's the line from that movie, Tommy Boy? Uh, he could sell a ketchup popsicle to a woman in white gloves. That's you, <laughs> <laughs> Damien. Can you promise if we ever have like formal TV ads that it involves Ral as a pirate of the Caribbean, something like that? Because if it's anything other than that, I'm just going to be disappointed. Listen, if, if we ever do formal TV ads in the Super Bowl, I will do everything I can to embarrass Raul. So, yes, okay. ideas like that are high on the list. Thank you. Now, this is, I mean, George, this is my Pirates of the Caribbean, right? I live, well, I, don't, I live between Grand Cayman and Little Cayman, but this island is a, and Damien's been here. In fact, I don't know who else has been here. George has been here. Have you been here, Shannon, to Little? No, not Little. It's an island. It's like... Perfect nature island, nothing That's else enough. here. A bunch of rum pirates and iguanas. I'll put it this way, when you land on the island on the airplane, it's, you actually land on the main road, which they have, to, they have to block off. The cars have to stop. You land on the main road, the, pe the airplane pulls to the side, and then they open it up again for cars to carry on driving around. I can't tell if you're kidding. No, no. That, that, is, that is what it's like. And if you get on the airplane, they distribute the weight. So, you know, Raoul used to have to sit at the back to balance out the weight, but now he's allowed to be at the front. <laughs> well played. <laughs> excellent, excellent. Uh, George, I think we have another giveaway, don't we? Do we have one more? Do we? Um, we did George the has now lost the plot, like everybody else. <laughs> we all lost the plot. George is no, basically holding us together. Everybody, oh, everybody's like, great. I don't know what we're doing. I'm like, show George us. George is a professional. This is, I got caught. I listen, I'm two tequilas in, you know, we're having fun. All right, look, uh, this one's really great. It's going to be RV membership giveaway, okay? So we're going to give away either five plus memberships or 10 essential memberships. And if you're already a member and you win this giveaway, then you're just gonna get a free upgrade. And if you're on the blacklist, there is no upgrade because you know, bragging rights, <laughs> but you'll be able to gift that membership to a friend or a family member, okay? So here we go, here's the question. Uh, Real Vision was first self-described as a combination of three things. One, The Economist, two, TED Talks, and three, what? And again, just uh, put your answers in the chat, address it to all panelists, and uh, we will announce the winners shortly. Yeah, I'm going to give a clue here. I like this one. Somebody put Captain Morgan's below the rug. 
Uh, Which just isn't as point. obvious as you might think. So, so just when we sat there, we said, okay, The Economist, it's like um, intelligent. It's intelligent, it's long form, <laughs> it's finance. TED Talks is video and big names. And we said, but we need a little bit of disruption in there, a little bit of anarchy, a little bit of cheekiness. And that's where number three comes from. Damien. No, it's not Pornhub. Whoever said Pornhub. <laughs> Asher Lampoons. Damien. Nobody yeah. really knows proper English here. Can you explain what cheekiness is? Oh, yes, yeah, so cheekiness. That's just you, George. <laughs> yes. So <laughs> well, I've lived there for seven years. I know. Yeah, George is from there and barely speaks English. Yeah. yeah, that kind of naughty, uh, uh, disruptive, slightly anarchistic, uh, that kind of mentality, that kind of behavior. I love that word. Favorite English term. Cheeky. Because you can yeah. use it on the so, like, I'll have a cheeky drink or yep. let's chip, nip out for a cheeky dinner or whatever. It's cheeky. It's whoever said the sex pistols. I wish we had said it wasn't the sex pistols, but I wish we had said that because that would have been damn cool. I just saw one. Well, I, I won't say it because I don't want people to. Jason, somebody Jason, put, um, somebody Jason, just what's put your guess? Trump flowers. <laughs> <laughs> Jason, I don't know, what's your to... guess? I'm trying to think of some of Raul's favorite bands, but those were from the, before the time I was born, so I can't think of any. <laughs> Can we get a clue? Is the brand? Uh, uh, the really they said Barry Manilow isn't one of them, okay? <laughs> I'm mortally <laughs> wounded. You got one correct answer so far, I will say that. Ooh, wow, wow. Hey. only one, amazing. Only one, so yeah. Everyone keeps saying Netflix, I see, and, and that's it's not, not Netflix, work. okay? It's not no. Netflix. The Onion? The no. Onion, possibly. Somebody put Baywatch. <laughs> <laughs> I mean... <laughs> Vice oh, is a good very guess. Good. Very good. I think we've got two now. So, Shannon, what else aren't we allowed to talk about that... It obviously is like a uh, red rag to a bull for us. Hmm. I mean, if I tell you, you're going to talk about it. So exactly. I, don't know what to, I don't know what to say, really. Because we've got so what many big it? things coming up. I kind of feel <laughs> like I want to just reveal. Have you noticed that Shannon uh, is the adult in the room? Yeah, exactly. Yes. <laughs> never would have thought, never would Yeah, I mean, let's be honest here. Ash is absolutely the adult in the room. I'm second, <laughs> second place. I have a, uh, another guest in the room. I got another guess. Is it possibly uh, two fat ladies? <laughs> <laughs> You're calling me a fat lady. It was, he said cheeky. You know, I was just going with the direction that <laughs> Damien, Damien put me in. Jason, I First, applaud you. You're hey. lucky the borders are closed. I come over. <laughs> come and talk to you right now. But Jason, just hide in Dallas. He'll never come here. <laughs> it's a third world country. <laughs> oh my God. country. Ral, remind me to tell you about our broken window. Um, okay, if we only have one or two people coming in, we've got more to give away. So we should do another hint. It's not a it's not a band. Okay. It's not so, yeah. It's it's not a band. It is should we just go for it? It's an animated television series. Stop there. That's good. Yeah, cheeky. Right. Think, think boom, cheeky. Boom, 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 think, boom, 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 We've got Jason, okay. we've got James, it's The Muppet Show. Whoever said The Muppet Show, please can we give them a prize? Yes. Just, <laughs> just because that's such a good answer. Yeah. Beavis it's and Butthead is a pretty good answer. answer Beavis and Beavis Butthead is pretty good. Yeah, I like it. <laughs> Looks like George is in a Turkish sauna. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. That's George's favorite, favorite spot, isn't it? Yeah, exactly. Stanioff style. George, this beard is getting, you're looking like a kebab salesman these days. <laughs> <laughs> I'm really afraid of letting this call go much longer because I feel like I'm, ne I'm next. I'm next for whatever the day. Yeah, gonna nobody's going to believe that. That's not it. No. <laughs> All right. I got the, uh, I got the answers or the, the winners here to the last giveaway. So I'm just going to read okay. them. Out. 
South Park, as Shannon mentioned. And here are the winners. We got Jamil Patel, Miguel Tavares, Michael Ree, Larry Fitzgerald, David Flint, Robert Lusick, John Armstrong, Peter Penha, Thomas Westland, and William Maker. So congratulations to you guys. We will reach out to you afterwards. Well done. Yeah. Somebody asked me to put my jacket back on. It's, it's Ooh, nice. crazy hot, but this is, this is my, you know. And did you guys see their mask earlier? <laughs> <laughs> oh, Jesus, that's creepy. Oh, that is very creepy. Yes. <laughs> Barry Manilow and the, the Ripper. <laughs> when I, my, uh, one of my few real vision moments was with Damien. I reached out about possibly doing something and we just did a call off camera. And one of the funny things for me was Damien asked me, he's like, so what's your deal? And I was like, well, I do this, I do that. And he goes, so you're a madman. And I knew that from Damien, I was like, he wants the answer to be yes. So I said, yes, I am a madman. And then he was like, so am I. And I was like, great. I love Real Vision. Let's hang. And that mask kind of uh, perfectly articulates. That's, we started doing some films. Uh, we're testing on TikTok. Just, okay. just playing around the edges on TikTok. So we had that made for some TikTok films, which were utterly shit and have been removed from TikTok. We've done something different. But I still have the mask in the office, and I love it. It's such a cool, scary thing. It's very like, like, like the purge. I don't know. Somebody in the audience has asked you to play the sax, because I know you're... <laughs> oh, <laughs> no. That's not just prop, because you're vain. It's because you're really, really a musician at heart, right? <laughs> <laughs> I would, I obviously. <laughs> My reeds aren't with me right now, so unfortunately. <laughs> I know Damien so well. His whole life is a stage set. Right? So all of these things, none this of them. This is all hired. The skateboard, the guitar, it's all been hired for the night. It all gets removed tomorrow morning. <laughs> and the jacket. And the jacket. And this the time. Mine. Let's be honest. <laughs> Hey, so I have I have another video I want to share, and this is a really good showcase of how fantastic our creative team is, and it's a really nice showcase of uh, the exchange. Kind of going back to that um, conversation. So give me just a second. Really proud of this. Uh, it's technically still in progress, but I think it's worthy to to show here. Mind fucking blowing. That's real vision. The four rarest words in finance are, I could be wrong. And I can't count the number of times that I've heard Raul and all the guests on Real Vision express that sentiment in large part because Real Vision is a community of people that are looking to challenge their own views and, and learn from each other. I represent uh, Disney uh, from the United States here in Peru. I'm a professional IFL footballer. Until uh, a few months ago, I was serving in the Canadian Army in intelligence. Now I'm a electrical engineering student. A geotechnical engineer. I'm an astrophysicist. I'm an industrial designer. And I'm a taxi driver living in Dublin, Ireland. Semi-retired professional golfer. Teacher, I teach Hebrew and Jewish studies. Former scientist. I'm a professional photographer and filmmaker. My formal training is in theoretical physics. My family owns a private game reserve in South Africa. I do spiritual life coaching. I was a stockbroker when I was 25 years old. I work in crypto. Private wealth manager in America. Financial technology, I'm a blockchain developer. <laughs> <laughs> Just an understanding of what is going on in the world. You know, not many people talk about the pension crisis that's coming and, you know, how gold is used and why people always look at gold as a safe haven. Real Vision explains so much of that stuff. I'm one of the first early adopters of Real Vision back in 2014 or 15. But what I use Real Vision for is, do I have my narrative right? And when Michael Gayad was joking around, say, crash be coming, yo. 
uh, you know, that, those are things that I, I like to take away from. What I specifically use it for now is to help me identify bleeding edge fintech and crypto companies, which can help me with my consulting business and, and to offer better solutions to my clients. You get an unbiased opinion of how people think, and this helps you as a beginner to invest wisely and invest with your eyes open in the land of the blind. So thanks Real Vision for everything you've done for me. And this is my first review video. I've never done this before. You deserve it. Often, I don't understand what they're talking about, but you know, I'm getting there and Real Vision, it's giving me like ideas. It's giving me entertainment and surprisingly, a lot of confidence about my investing ability and a lot of peace of mind. Uh, so if you're new to this, pal, strap in. And oh yeah, I just eat that shit up. Keep doing what you're doing. Thanks so much for doing it. Many thanks to Real Vision. We rely on you guys. Thank you, Real Vision. Raul and company, thank you for everything you guys do. It's an amazing product. You've helped me immensely in the past couple of years. Man, I even wear my t-shirts like you do. You know, keep up the good work. I'm a huge fan. Uh, thanks, for, thanks for the content. <laughs> Love that. That's that's everybody watching this. That's you guys. You're fucking amazing. <clears throat> amazing. Without without everybody who watches this, we're nobody. We're nothing. And it's it's the members that make everything. Except James, who's a little bit dodgy. <laughs> <laughs> how, come, how come James has the best audio of anyone at Real? Vision? It is fantastic. I'm just uh I'm getting so sick of the straight on Zoom thing that I had to uh, try and improve it a little bit. Yeah, Set that up. a little, a little okay. lean with it, rock with it there, and you're good to go. So, we go. We'll hey, side. can I ask you guys one thing? Um, what, 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 uh, would you guys want to see on the exchange that would like drive you to go spend more time there? You know, like we talk about it. You know, I'll message Jeremiah. We'll talk to Weston. You know, whatever. But like we, we talk about a cocktail hour on Sundays to prepare for the week, which I don't suggest drinking before the week starts, but like, what are some things that you guys would like to see on there that would drive you to spend some time there as well? I think apart from the back button <laughs> <laughs> um, and, a chronol and a feed that's not just chronological, which is coming, I promise everybody. For me, it would be like corral themed ideas. So like you choose a week and say, today's going to be oil or this week's gonna be oil, and curate the best ideas, research trade ideas, whether it's in video form or written form, on a topic. Because then we can all go down that rabbit hole of learning from each other. So I would love, I would love that. Because then you yeah. can announce it and say, it's oil week on change. And that's gonna get us all learning the same thing. Because if not, it gets a bit too much like, there's everything here. But if you can get it thematic with Western and stuff like that, kind of all corral in the same thing, that would be epic. So kind of narrow down the noise to a bit more well, you narrow. Can have noise, the noise is good, but just keep a thread somehow mm. of one topic. So we. I have the answer for you. What's that? So I think when the moment when everyone's going to just start being part of it is at the moment you have the platform and the exchange, but the moment they become one thing, there is, you cannot distinguish between the two, then the thing is gonna, and everyone's gonna start really engaging because there's no, it's gonna be one thing. It's gonna be one ecosystem of, you know, a community content, user generated content and, and just everything else. Yeah. I, I, I agree with that. One thing I would love to see, I think Raul's bang on on the curation and I, I totally agree with George about the seamlessness, but in the meantime, tactically, what I would love to see is people talk about mistakes because everybody talks about ideas and everyone talks about you know opportunity, but I, would, I think there's a lot of learning and mistakes. And I think, you know, somebody mentioned in that video you know, I could be wrong. And I think there's enormous value that comes, you know, we learn more from mistakes and I'd love to see a whole thread or theme or series or show just about mistakes, just about fuck ups, just about things I've learned, things I got wrong and why I got it wrong. I think that, I think that'd be interesting. And well, I think like we'd the, all learn a lot from that. 
the panel we did at Festival of Learning, my biggest fuck up and what I learned from it. I mean, yeah. I used to, you know, I used to work on events where people were afraid of like, oh, well, he hasn't done so well in the last year. Do we really want him as a speaker? And it's like, yeah, of course we do. Talk about it. If he's willing to talk about it, then why not? You learn more from that than the successes. Yeah. And it's not something we talk about, you know, it, it's because the thing about investing is you have to rely so much on a belief, your self-belief system and confidence and a vision of where you think the world's going. And it's an edifice or, you know, it's a psychological edifice of confidence. And that's what keeps you going. I question but recognize mistakes. That's a question, Jason. What's your biggest fuck up? Oh, Jesus. I on this. Enough time. Yeah, exactly. In, intro, introducing Shannon to uh, <laughs> <laughs> their biggest mistake. I, uh, honestly, I was a commercial real estate developer in, in 2008, 2009, was over levered, just blew up. It was a fucking nightmare and being on the fetal position on the floor for that for extended periods of time uh, taught me about long volatility and tail risk and, and leverage management. Yeah. How did you transition from that into what you do now? Because of that, it was so fucking painful to lose like friends, family, money, and to, to go through that experience that I figured there had to be a way to hedge entrepreneurial risk. And so I was already, I'd been trading my own book for you know, a decade before that and then since, and that just, it was just going down that rabbit hole and, and just like an entrepreneur, just trying to find a solution. James, what about you? You, you, you trade pretty short term, so you're, you're used to, you're happy, you're comfortable being wrong a lot, right? What's your what's the oh, time yeah. you really when I really shouldn't have done that when you didn't just take a normal loss but you did something really stupid? Um, I think it comes down to having too much uh, hubris and not learning the um, bigger side of trading, like the macro. Uh, I didn't ever have a top down. I always like just traded from the bottom up, tick for tick, and uh, I think that cost me. I mean, insane amounts of money in, in, in the long run. So I guess finding that, that knowledge base and being interested in it, like five years too late uh, or, or whatever, uh, I was probably, cause I just thought I kind of had it figured out. Um, and that got me to thinking like the market's going to move how I want it to move. And, you know, really I'm not in control. I learned that I'm not in control of anything and I, and learning all of this stuff from real vision helps me understand that much more and has helped me make more money. So mine was yeah. when I first joined GLG, I've been a salesman and my job was to get people in, in the biggest positions possible and make the most commission. So I now go to becoming a hedge fund manager. So I don't understand trade sizing and doing things that I don't know anything about. I knew a lot of things about a lot of things. I didn't know anything about the fact that the biggest kind of big hitter hedge fund salesman from Morgan Stanley that my boss loved calls me up and goes, here, I know you knew, I've got a great idea for you. It's the semiconductors versus the NASDAQ as a spread. I'm, I know nothing about semi semiconductors and I literally knew nothing about the NASDAQ. I'm a macro guy, so I had no idea. I'm like, it sounds like a great idea. He goes, how much, what sort of size do you want to do? I'm like, I don't know, 10 million bucks a size. I just kind of invented the number. So I come in the next morning and it had moved 15% on the open against me. I was down one and a half million, which was a lot more than I should have lost. And my boss was comfortable with. I had to go to my boss and said, well, kind of the first sort of trade I've done, I've lost a million of dollars. He goes, well, what do you do? He said, well, I put this trade on, you know, $10 million aside. I said, why? What do you know about that? I said, I don't know. <laughs> and, then it, <laughs> and then I realized that these are not the things you should do. You should be, do things that you understand. And if you don't understand them and you want to learn about them, do them a lot smaller. That was very painful. I've got, well, I've got one. a similar story for you, uh, except mine was, I actually did know what I was doing. You know, I, I had the underline for this, uh, this uh, stock and uh, I decided that I would get into the options market. And when I decided to do it, I didn't have a stop. And I also, you know, uh, took on a position that was way too big. You know, the sizing was completely wrong. 
and this happened and this was a, uh, a oil refiner just as 9-11 happened. Uh, and I was saying that actually, if any event risk happened, oil would go up. But as it turns out, uh, it wasn't a repeat of uh, 2000 or, or, or rather uh, the Iraq war. It was uh, the exact opposite. And so I was locked into this position for like six days until the markets reopened. Then, you know, it opened. And uh, what did I do? I should have, you know, immediately sold my entire position, but I didn't. And uh, and so I took double the losses that I would have had I sold, at, at, you know, right at, at the right time. See, I love it already. That's three, four stories about mistakes and learnings that hmm. you've learned, but I learned from listening to you. You know, I think it's such a rich vein and it's, it's usually the thing we hide, but actually it's the thing we should bring to the fore. I've got a really short, I've got a really short one. Um, in, I think late 2013, early 2014, um, I went out to lunch, uh, with a guy, uh, who was that had, the mistake? Was that the mistake, Ash? No, no, it wasn't the mistake. It was a lovely <laughs> lunch, uh, but this guy had just started a company. Um, and he told me about his idea and it was very early on. They had some minimal product in the marketplace and it was fascinating. It was just an absolutely amazing company. It was absolutely an amazing idea. And I went back and I kind of went back and forth and thought about it. He didn't formally ask me to join, but he was obvious that he was interested in seeing if I wanted to. And at the end of the day, I thought, it's like five guys on an island in the Caribbean. I just don't know that this is ever going to really scale. And of course, that guy was uh, Grant Williams. And um, I came in four years later. <laughs> we still don't know what we're doing. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, that, I mean, even though Ralph says he still doesn't know what he's doing, we should probably announce uh, how this sort of grand ticket uh, giveaway, the golden prize, which is a half hour private call with Raul, the man who doesn't know what he's doing, but he will, <laughs> he will help you as best he can and talk to you about whatever you need. So for this, um, all you have to do is you answer the B question that we've been asking all our panelists today, which is just what is your uh, sort of most, most embarrassing or memorable Real Vision uh, experience thus far as an audience member or as a subscriber. And then um, they, uh, the winner will be announced, and correct me if I'm wrong, Shannon, next week on the daily briefing. Is that correct? I believe so. Um, sorry, blame the Negroni. So uh, on screen, you'll see a URL. Go to that URL to enter, realvision.com slash cocktail quiz. And uh, you'll find a very interesting message from uh, one of our important co-founders who was left out of this um, cocktail party. Milton, very important around here. Uh, really should have invited him, but I guess he was kind of here by proxy through Damien. He's, so, a bit of, uh, he's a bit of a dummy like Damien. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, the inspiration. <laughs> go, go to that URL, realvision.com slash cocktail quiz and complete the challenge by 11.59 PM this Sunday, February 28th. So enter to win through that website. Um, and win a chance to chat with uh, with Raoul, who we won't say is one of the dummies around here. <laughs> no, I would, I would, I would, mm. I would, I would. It's fair. <laughs> uh, definitely check that out. It's uh, it's a big prize. Definitely very important. But uh, the actual process for entering is pretty fun. We had a lot of fun with that. Very good. Look, uh, this group I think could keep going for quite a while. So uh, it's Friday night, Damien. It's like midnight for you. God knows. So <laughs> <laughs> we should let you get home. He doesn't go so it's, to go. He's in lockdown. He goes. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> probably rather that is true. He is at home and in lockdown. This is the most social I've been for months. Yeah. <laughs> it, it shows. Well, I mean, look, the the big takeaway here is we obviously have a lot of fun together, but I think what we're doing at Real Vision is really special. We've had a really big year, and a lot of really exciting stuff is coming up. So if you're already along for the ride, we're looking forward to seeing you soon. And if you're still thinking about it about joining, joining the community, then um, hopefully we've uh, pushed you over the edge and we'll, we'll see you around. See you everyone. Thanks, have, a great evening. have a great night or have a great morning.